What's up guys, Lou here back with another video, but before we get into it I want to give a quick shout out to another video that I did on Tide's channel. They asked me to mess up one of my favorite garments. Yes, one of my favorite hoodies. I put a couple of different sauces on there and chocolate ice cream. And the challenge was to see if their Tide Pod product could actually get those stains out so I could keep wearing it and looking pretty for you here on Unbox Therapy. So go check out the video. There's a link in the description, probably an annotation as well. Show some Unbox Therapy love for Tide because everybody needs to have some clean clothes. Get yourself cleaned up. A little bit easier for Mr. Jack, isn't it? Isn't it? What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today we've got some headphones. You guys know that I love headphones. These ones are special. I've been looking for so long for the perfect set of wireless headphones to have at my desk for convenience. As far as wireless headphones go, these are some of the best that exist as far as I know because they use uncompressed uh, wireless digital frequency response transmission. That sounds pretty complicated. There's no compression that's applied to the sound like in Bluetooth. It's using its own uh, RF frequency. So essentially the idea here is the highest quality sound without wires. It also has this really cool base station that charges the headphones, giving them up to 18 hours of battery life. Th these are one of the reasons that I've been holding off on episode three of my desk tour, because I wanted to make sure these got on that desk before I did it. They're not cheap. Then again, a lot of things here on Unbox Therapy aren't. But as many things in life follow this rule, you get what you pay for, right? Right, Jack? All right, pop these babies open. Accessories, the actual RS-185. Oh yes. Nice and light, surprisingly light. When it comes to fit on a pair of headphones, it's as important, in my opinion, as sound. There's my phone going off. Hello? Hey, I'm uh, in the middle of making a video, like actually recording right now. You, I think you just made it in the video. Yeah, you're, you're a big star now. Okay, say hi to the world, real quick. Um, I'm gonna put you on speaker. Really, you do? Okay, bye. This is the base station. This can sit on your desk. Look at that. Essentially act not only as a charging stand, but a stand for your headphones. So here we can display them, charge them at the same time, as well as have all of our controls. So we have volume on the front, a level button for ALC or MLC. And then at the top, there's a battery indicator. On the back here is all of your IO. You have a digital optical in. So yes, this can take a digital signal. And then you have an analog one if you're going low tech, old school. Not that there's a problem with that. And then a power as well. And here is your selector for whichever audio input you're using. On the top is the charging section. Those little pins will charge up your headphones and that pretty much rounds out the transmitter, the accessories, some paperwork. When I was young, I used to go to bed with the manuals from the latest gadgets that I had purchased. And when I say go to bed, I mean go to bed. Okay, think about that. A bunch of power adapters, North America, Europe. Somebody told me what this one was recently, New Zealand, Australia. AJ? Perfect. Booyah, ready for power. So here we have an RCA style cable for an analog input, an optical cable for digital audio and batteries. So there's a couple of little tabs here telling me to twist the ear pad and that exposes the battery section. One battery, two batteries, velour style or microfiber style ear cups, super comfy. Uh, for me, they don't get as hot. On the side here is where you're gonna control everything. Here you can see you can control level, left and right, and volume as well. Now these are an open back style. Sennheiser does make closed back wireless headphones as well. Okay, so now I have these hooked up to an audio source. You're probably gonna have these in an entertainment unit or hooked up to your computer permanently. Now I noticed a couple things on the front here. This level button controls the ALC or MLC. So that's the automatic level control or manual. Then you have a knob here for controlling the input level. So let's go ahead and start up some music. So you don't wanna overload this manual control. So if I go to automatic level control, so it sort of finds the right level and then I suppose you're gonna control the volume 
here on the headphones. So the uh, the ALC is working perfectly right now. It's not clipping at all. As you can tell, sound is bleeding here like crazy, but that's the intent with an open back design. If you're concerned with like disturbing people in your direct vicinity, if people are sitting in the same room as you, like in an office type environment, that might be an issue. But if you're in an office where people can't get down with instrumentals like this, you probably don't want to be there anyways. I'm going to turn it up now. So if you overload the manual control, you'll actually get a, a red light indicator. So that's really cool. So you can kind of fine tune it. Okay, so we're working with plenty of volume there. Plenty. You can really blast these things if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and try them with a number of different sources. And if you guys have any more questions about them, I will be using them on the daily. So hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Unbox Therapy. You can ask me questions there. So far, very comfy. And the sound is, well, impressive. Once again, if you're interested in pricing and availability, the links will be down in the description. These are about to find a new home on my desk. And they're going to look pretty damn pretty over there. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode. Later. You're probably so cool that you listen to bands that don't even exist yet. That's as cool as it gets. Airplane. Mm -hmm. What's up guys? Lou here back with another video and it is another installment in the new hot new series Does It Suck? Hot off the presses hot like pizza, the Amazon Basics on-ear headphones. They're about $14. And they come in this frustration-free packaging. Certified frustration-free. I'm already frustrated reading that. You guys know the whole purpose of this show is to look at items that are a little bit less expensive, are reviewed well on Amazon that, that you might have questions about. You might be sitting there looking at the product page and wondering, are these things any good for $14? I know. I'm a little bit skeptical. You probably are too, but that's what this series is for. So let's do it. As you can tell, this is uh, Amazon Basics. Basic. So I suppose the idea here with $14 headphones, you just need something simple to replace possibly a pair that you lost or maybe the pre-included headphones, like say these earbuds. Maybe you got $14 to buy a gift for somebody or $14 to buy a gift for yourself. Inside the box, it is super simple. Couple of plastic bags. They are recyclable. Little bit of protective stuff here. They look okay. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. No microphone or anything, but hey, listen, that's okay. This big sticker here, not a huge fan of it. Came off pretty easily. All right, good for you, Amazon. I'm not frustrated yet. And you don't want to see me frustrated. Such a puny little knife. Headphones, little neoprene padding on the top, matte black, fairly cushiony ear pads here. And let's go ahead and try them on. So it's an on-ear style. Oh, there's also a carrying case. Pretty sure you guys saw that. Without even plugging in any music, the isolation is pretty good. But the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So let's find out exactly what kind of noise these make. $14. All right. Most surprising part, the low end. I think you guys can hear it there. I hope so. Coming up close to the microphone. Okay, now I'm not usually a huge fan of on-ear style headphones. I, I would normally take an around-the-ear style instead, but for what they are, it, this is surprising. The, these are legit. This is a legit headset. They're simple. Listen, this is plastic. The sound is certainly an improvement over standard little ear pods like this. I'm gonna just refresh my memory right now real quick. Now, it might not be a fair comparison. These are free headphones in their in-ear style. It's a harsher kind of crunchiness. I'm gonna switch back right now just to keep it fresh. It's night and day. It's night and day, really. Uh, if you're looking for, I don't know, the most 
basic Amazon basic upgrade to your audio. These are a good value for 14 bucks. Uh, these are certainly not throwaway headphones. Check them out. I don't know. They don't suck. No way. They do not suck. I like being surprised here on Does It Suck? And I really had low expectations for $14 headphones, but they're legit. There you have it. I'll drop a link in the description if you wanna check out pricing and availability on them. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you're living in earbud purgatory, and you wanna step the game up, but just a little bit. This is worth trying. Basic stuff, not so basic sound. All right, later guys. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video. And it's another episode of Does It Suck? One of my favorite things to do here on Unbox Therapy, look at relatively inexpensive items that you might not expect to be very good and hopefully uncover some gems. The Fotiv PH BT H3 Bluetooth headphones. Now I've had my eyes on these for a long time. They're $39 Bluetooth headphones. Big fan of Bluetooth headphones when I'm traveling. The convenience of Bluetooth not having that cable. And believe it or not, nowadays you can actually get some pretty decent sound out of Bluetooth headphones. I've been using various pairs of Sony Bluetooth headphones for a while now, but they're expensive. So maybe, just maybe, we have found something that will fit right into your lifestyle and right into the limitations of your bank account. Could be a gem, could be a needle in the haystack. The haystack being Amazon and the millions of headphones that are there. The needle being these Bluetooth headphones. Let's get inside and find out. It's the whole point of this damn show. Slim compact form factor equipped with Bluetooth. Two 40 millimeter drivers. Those are pretty big speakers on the side of your head. 15 hours of play time with just three hours of charging. Let's go ahead and crack into these babies. Come on. I think I'm having a $39 unboxing experience here. Nope, there we go. A case, a protective case, little Silka pouch, activated carbon, do not eat. Did you eat lunch yet, Jack? No. Here you go. <laughs> nice protective case, says Fotiv on here. Uh, not bad for 39. Here are the headphones, little paperwork over here. Little pouch over here as well for your cables and whatnot. It'll charge over micro USB. Yes, micro USB cable is included. Now, there's also a traditional audio cable, mini jack 3.5 millimeter. Maybe you're on an airplane, let's say, and you wanna listen to the in-flight entertainment, then unfortunately that is not Bluetooth capable. So you've got the cable. We'll see if these headphones have any charge. My initial reaction, you know what? These feel pretty substantial. A lot like my Sony's actually. So the ear cups swivel. You've got buttons, dedicated volume buttons here, a power switch. This is where you're gonna charge them. There's a little flap or for your dedicated headphone cable if you're not using Bluetooth. This looks like your microphone for answering phone calls, play pause, forward, back to skip tracks when you're listening to music. Let me try these on. Hmm, I don't know, a medium, a medium size, I guess I'd say. Comfy though, lightweight. Big fan of lightweight headphones. So the headband is metal. Now let's see if these have any power. Oh, feel like I heard a beep there. Oh yeah, look, check it. So it's flashing blue and red, which I assume means it's ready to be paired. There we are, BTH3 headphones paired for call and media audio. How easy is that? Time for a little Muzak. volume for days, probably into like danger zone territory. Wow, $39? Bluetooth? These are legit. These are, these, now I know why they are reviewed so well on Amazon. I don't know, man, they're really comparable to my Sony's. Should I get my Sony's, Jack? 
All right, give me one second. They are super comparable to these ones. These are like, like 150-ish. The layout is almost identical, actually. Let me go ahead, same song, let's check it out. The Sony sound a little bit better, a little bit crispier, and I'd also say they're marginally more comfortable, a little bit lighter. But these are the real story of this video because they're not even in the same price range. Like, it's tough to get a good pair of wired headphones at $39, and these are Bluetooth, and they sound great for 39 bucks. They sound great. They sound better than I expected. And also the build is just better than I expected. All right, another episode of Does It Suck? And another surprised version of Lou in front of you. For yourself, for a family member, for the girl you've got a crush on. Bluetooth headphones. Bluetooth headphones for everyone. Thanks very much for watching. Leave a thumbs up down below if you appreciated this content. And I will catch you very shortly, as usual, on the next episode. Later, guys. Bluetooth? <laughs> the puppeteer. God damn it, Jack. We're not putting that in. What's up, guys? Lou here, back with another video. And today, I've got something unusual to show you. Yes, they're headphones, and I've unboxed many, many headphones here on the channel. But these ones are the first modular headphones I've ever looked at. They're from a company called III. 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 The Puppeteer. They're based in Denmark. You get to pick and choose your headband, your ear cups, your cables. So I have the actual all around preset pair of headphones on the left and then I have some modular components that I'm unaware of on the right. So first let's take a closer look at box number one. On the side here you can see it features a cable lock, adjustable ear cups, an angled stereo plug, and a one button remote. This preset has been configured with the all round S01 speaker unit which delivers a balanced sound representation suitable for all music genres. Essentially this setup is a basic configuration for most listening scenarios. So inside, what is this An envelope? Congratulations. In here we have these really cool packages. This is the cable. Ooh, smells fresh in there. Smell that Jack. Give that a smell. Factory fresh or what? All right, so here is the cable, one button, remote and microphone, the ear pad, ear pads. So that's a soft microfiber, very nice. And you can see on the back here, they simply clip in. Here are the speaker units. This is like DIY headphones. It's a dream come true. So we've actually got the S01 speaker unit here. Got a soft touch plastic. And then the last thing in this kit is the headband. This one is the polycarbonate, as I mentioned before. It's gonna be really lightweight. Why don't we just do this right now? Let's just build this thing right now. I feel like I wanna take this sticker off though first. Hang on, knife time, knife time. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit this on here. And since these are modular, you could have like multiple ear cups that you own, depending on what you're gonna be listening to, you could simply take these off really easily and add the other ones. All right, let's get this other one on. Okay, we certainly need some ear cushions now. Go ahead and fit on the ear cushions, which just secure into place with a press down. Very easy, very lightweight. I hardly feel any pressure from the headband. It's super lightweight. I didn't even think about this. When you travel with these things, you can just break them down. Let me see how quickly I can break them down. So, twist this. I suppose if I if I was a little bit more to lock or to unlock. Let me try that again. There we go, okay. Pull that, pull that. Booyah, headphones. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now that we've unboxed the all-around preset, I also have this box from III, which doesn't actually tell me what's inside, but I'm pretty sure this is some other components that you can outfit the kit with. So here we have, oh wow. So we have a, a completely different set. We have different speaker units, different ear pads, a different headband and a different cable. So this is the C04 cable, coiled woven cable, a lot thicker and coiled. Cool. It also is braided. And then on this end, we have a screw on locking adapter 
for quarter inch audio equipment. Of course, you can break it down to your standard mini jack. These are the leather over ear ear pads. Yes. Ooh. Have you ever heard someone get so excited about ear cups? Probably not. Now, look at, look at, in this particular case, you have two options, right? So you got the smaller one, maybe for travel. You got the bigger one that you use at your desk. Forget about having to own two pairs of headphones. This is the solution. S03 speaker units. So these have a warm sound. What did the other package say? The all round is listed as a balanced sound suitable for all genres. Now the SO3 is listed as warm, engineered with titanium coated driver to reduce distortion and designed with a fully sealed driver providing a full rich sound. Interesting. Oh, there's a little note in here. The speaker units perform best after a short burn-in period that allows the driver's voice coil and diaphragm to reach their optimal performance level. We therefore recommend that you give them up to 24 hours of low to moderate volume play before subjecting them to critical use. Many different headphones benefit through a burn-in period as suggested. Now, which headband did we get on this second unit? Rugged. Very nice. Ooh. I like this headband. It's a little heavier, for sure, but the material here, really nice. Okay, so here's the best part. Now we have all these various components, but we can use them all together or apart. We can do anything. So many options, so much room for activities. God damn it, Jack. That joke was completely irrelevant. I wanna use the slim headband, but with the big ear cups, done. I wanna use the rugged hand headband with the uh, smaller on-ear ear cups, no problem. I wanna use the braided cable with the, the slim headband, no problem. I suppose the next thing to do now is to listen to these babies. So right now we're using the over-ear style 40 millimeter driver. Wow, so far very surprised by the low end. Lots of punch here in the low end. These are crispy as a mother. Crispy as a mother. Oops. Okay, so now I have the initial drivers installed in the second configuration. So these are the all round drivers. Wow, I think I like these ones better actually. Okay, so just for fun, we've gone ahead and installed one of each of the two drivers so I can compare them in real time. But I don't know which is which. Jack did the installation just for this purpose. So let's do the same thing with one of each and find out which one I prefer. I, I can certainly tell the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and say the one on this ear is the warm sounding one, the first driver that I heard, and this is gonna be the all around more balanced one. This one gives you more thump in the low end, which might be what you're looking for. I think this one's a little bit more accurate. Completely up to you, it's all about taste. That's the beauty of this kind of setup, S01. This is the first time you really get to tailor your experience to your style. If you're interested in checking this stuff out, I'll drop links down in the description. Go try and configure your own set. This is really, really cool. I'm really, really pumped. I think you guys can tell that. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode. Later guys. What am I done? Woo. It's been a while since I evaluated some headphones. It's been a thing that I've been focused on in the past. In fact, if you look at the channel, you can see that I have tested some very expensive headphones, but nothing in the same realm as what I'm about to do today. I have my very first set of headphones from a company called Final. You kind of see that in between this crazy texture that exists on the box. This is a company from Japan, claims to make the greatest headphones ever. Inside of here is a product that is handmade all the way down to the drive. But it's not just about the look, the appearance, the craftsmanship, it's also about performance. And these have been very highly regarded, even at their astronomical price tag. It's called the D8000. So here we can see the impedance, 60 ohms. The sensitivity, 98 dB. They are 523 grams. Couple of different cables, 1.5 meters and three meters. And there's even a stand in here, apparently. Oh, did I tell them how much? The final D8000, these are almost four thousand dollar 
headphones. 3,799 USD or 3,000 British pounds. Let's get inside the box first. It's a box in a box situation. This looks like it's unit number 323. Oh. Ooh. Look how thick those audio cables are. The stand is nicer on its own, has some rubbery feet on it, so it really sticks once it's on the table. Oh man. There you have it. This is the final D8000 neoprene almost material on the ear cups. The ear cups themselves, they pivot, they articulate 360 degrees on the headband. Everything is metal here, with the exception of the headband, which is leather. On the bottom, you have your cable connections, one on each ear cup. Oh. That's your setup right there. I've got everything hooked up now. I got the dark voice tube headphone amplifier. I've also got this little phono box here. Let's try them on. Of course, open back design. I can hear my surroundings. I'm looking for that wide sound stage. Yes. Look at those babies. That's serious. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, here's the thing, right? Like, music, everybody listens to music. Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Google Play, next, 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 next. The thing about it that's hard to explain is that a process like this, a setup like this, and a product like this, it's really beyond the scope of practicality. You are in the realm of experience, you're in the realm of nuance, you're in the realm of subtlety. You're trying to examine it like a, a piece of art in an art gallery. You're sitting there like, hmm, right, there's that, and there's also that, and even that. And as it all comes together, your ability to discern those small little fragments changes your overall experience with the art. You guys don't understand how hard it is to be ever in a situation in this environment sitting right here where I can even momentarily completely forget that you're sitting right there. I've done this what like 1500 times like I've sat here. There's a mic, there's monitors, there's a big TV. It is not easy to forget that all of that is going on. Somehow that experience right there I was gone. I wasn't here. I don't know, was I in the studio with them? Was I at a live show in the early 70s? Was I even uh, on planet Earth? Can you put some uh, Black Sabbath on and just be there for a minute, huh? Are you available to even know what it is, to listen to it? I don't know. I don't think I was, and then I was. It's kind of crazy to me that this experience that I just had on camera, it required this video to take place. I didn't do this on my own accord. It had to kind of happen in order to snap me into this mode right now. And I'm not sure it's what you tuned in for, but I'm not sure you have a choice at this point. We just had that experience together, you and I. That's right, Jack, Will. Chances are you probably want to listen to some music properly for once. And now I'm starting to sound like some kind of elitist. I don't necessarily think you need these headphones. I'm just saying I got a lesson in paying attention right now today. Are these headphones responsible? At least partially. Because of these headphones, I'm asking you to do a better job paying attention. Maybe you do, I don't know. But myself and a lot of people around me, I don't know, I'm seeing some things and I'm not feeling great about it. So that's my challenge to you. Pay a little bit more attention. Throw some Black Sabbath on, put some headphones on. I don't know, take a minute. You're alive, it's happening. It's all right here. Make yourself available every so often, please. Thank you. 
So these are the ATH M50X from Audio Technica, a cult favorite that then became one of the best sellers, one of the most popular headphones on all of Amazon. Okay, fine. So it's a great headphone. It's a popular headphone. Why are you talking about it right now, Lou? What's happening? What has developed? Something very exciting, in fact. So many of you have gone out and bought this headphone, but you've been stuck. You're sitting at home with the wired connection, or you have the wire heading out from this port here to your mobile device or wherever it is that your audio source lives. But today, I got this product over here from a company called East Brooklyn Labs, the BAL-M50X. This is a Bluetooth adapter specifically for the M50X. This little guy will plug in to where your cord normally would plug in and you will pair up to the adapter. It's modular, it's beautiful. Now this isn't the first solution I have found for taking a wired headphone and making it wireless. There are in fact other ways to do that as well from various brands. So here's an adapter from a company called AirMod and they're focusing on the Bose products. So the QC25 and the QC15. Here are a couple products to turn those headphones into wireless and they fit in there perfectly as well. And then we've got this company here, XO Audio. They make similar adapters but for Beats headphones so here's one for the beat studio here's one for the beat solo 2 and then the last one is this one here it's called Airlink. now to me these are the two most exciting why because I've got some M50X already and because the Airlink takes any headphone and makes it wireless. So this little guy, this little module, would you look at that? How pretty is that little thing? So this will clip on to your shirt, your sweater, pocket, coat, something like that. And not only does it give you control over volume, your microphone for answering phone calls, and even what looks like a shutter button for a camera right there. This clips here, the ear pods go up and into your ears, and now you're not tethered to your pocket. Now I know before you say it, I know what you want to say. You want to say, but that's not actually wireless because there's a wire going to this module. But it is a lot more convenient than having the wire go all the way down to the pocket. So with a product like this, you're able to shorten the distance from the cord to your ears. Okay, so that's cool. The AirLink, the other adapters that I mentioned earlier, exciting stuff if you have one of those pairs of headphones or if you want the universal one. But the one that I'm most pumped up for is this one here from East Brooklyn Labs because like I said, the the iconic M50X now gets the Bluetooth treatment. It now turns into a Bluetooth headphone. And best of both worlds here, you can still use it with a wire if you want to. So let's crack this open, see what it's all about. So it has a similar shape to those Beats adapters that I showed you earlier. Also in the package is a tiny little micro USB cable to keep this thing charged up. And then the adapter itself. It's got a matte finish on it, which I like, so it shouldn't get too many fingerprints. Your power switch is over here. And let's see how it fits in. So this is the design of the M50X if you've never seen it. It has this channel which moves down a little bit. Oh, you're, you might be wondering as well, Lou, what's up with your M50X? Why you have the cool color on there? So this is a D brand skin actually, allowing you to customize the look of the M50X. I told you it's that popular. They even made a skin for that's how many people have this headphone. And worth mentioning before I insert this, the M50X doesn't allow for a 3.5 millimeter connection on the headphone side. It's actually smaller, it's 2.5 millimeter right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this fit here. Ooh, I like that. So the way that they've built this, this is cool design here. This section of the headphone sinks into this section of the adapter right here. So it doesn't hang down too low. It's not, it's not much of an obstruction at all. In fact, it only increases the length of the ear cup by not even half an inch. And that's what it looks like when you're wearing it. I'll show Will here. I mean, it's really not a big deal. It has hardly any weight to it. And all of a sudden, my favorite headphones are now wireless. I mean, that's cool. So there you can see, see that little blue light? It might be tough to see because it's lit up in here, but the blue light starts flashing immediately when you have the power switch flipped on. I mentioned that this charges up over micro USB. And then on the front, you have your controls, the Bluetooth button, volume up and down. I think it's in pairing mode immediately though, because it is flashing blue right now. See that there. So let's check if it's available. M50X, BAL, M50X. So now I'm gonna put these on and let's see how this sounds through the adapter. Uh. 
So as far as the button in the middle goes, I think you might hold it to reestablish a Bluetooth connection, but if you tap it, it pauses what you're listening to. So you could have a conversation and tap it again, and then it picks up again. They've done a serious job here. I am beyond impressed. That is a package. The M50X is already a great headphone. One of the minor drawbacks, you can't use it wirelessly. Now you can without giving up the wired capabilities. The sound quality though is probably the most impressive part. Lots of juice, which I didn't expect on a large over ear headphone and just overall punchy. It sounds good. I would recommend this. If you have an M50X or you're thinking of getting an M50X, this is probably the best companion piece that you could add to it. I'll link it down below in the description. They've done a great job. Just remember, this isn't your only avenue. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there are solutions to essentially turn any wired headphone into a wireless headphone, including earbuds and so on, with the universal adapter I showed you called the AirLink, and then of course, the separate products for the Beats headphones and the Bose headphones. I just think this is probably my favorite of the bunch, so check these guys out. Oh, and also worth mentioning, the company that makes this adapter, East Brooklyn Labs, they're claiming a five hour runtime, so five hours of listening on a single charge. And I also just noticed, not only is it available on Amazon, but you can get it bundled. So you get the headphones and the adapter all in one package. Either way, I'll link it down below. Critical listening with Will Do. There he goes, Willie Do. It's nice knowing him though. Oh my goodness, this is a moment right now. I have something incredibly special in front of me, which you probably could already tell based on the presentation. Engraved roller, handcrafted headphones. I've looked at all the headphones, maybe a hundred videos on headphones. Maybe never have I been this pumped to check out a pair of headphones, and that's because these are incredibly exclusive. You can't even buy these things right now. Like, if you are interested in these headphones, you send an email, you call a number, you, you put your name in the hat, and you're like, you cross your fingers. Just for the opportunity to pay $3,000, my friend. This is special. In front of me here, I've been told that I have number 004, the fourth pair of these headphones out of 10 in existence. Should we jump inside the box, Jack? That's the real deal. Woo -hoo -hoo! Look at those little guys rolled up in there. So this is what's special about these. As the name implies, the roller, it's a headband using watch mechanics to get the perfect fit on any individual and allow itself to be rolled up into this incredibly compact package. Because it's meant to travel with you, they've included a nice little pouch here, a suede pouch. There's also a microfiber cleaning cloth a cable, braided, very durable looking. Oh man, look at that. You gotta love a robust cable, especially for 3,000 bucks. Some extra ear pads. The ear pads are removable. The cable is removable. When you're spending this kind of money on a headphone, you wanna make sure you can replace certain components. This is a very soft ear pad with some memory foam underneath, very nice. These are white, it looks like the pre-installed ones are gray. Whoa, the quality there, you can just, it's, it's cool to the touch. The entire headphone here is aluminum and steel. I can't even see a single plastic component on there. Okay, let me unroll this here. Whoa. That's great, so, so you've got 22 separate stainless steel springs that allow this to extend around your head, but then, at the same time, can help it fold super compactly into that right there, the palm of your hand, and then into the case. Look at the size of that little package. It's not much bigger than some of the bags I've seen for audiophile grade earbuds, let's say. But this is an on-ear headphone. Swiss crafted number 004. This is number 004 out of 10 that are in existence and 100 that will eventually exist. I don't know that any other person outside the company has these things in their possession other than myself. So of course, removable cable, you can put it on either ear cup, the right or the left. The ear cup is adjustable still. And I notice it kind of pivots a little bit too for the, to compensate for whatever your head shape happens to be. I think I'm just gonna try them on. Let's see what happens here. Ooh. 
Okay, so that's a pretty sleek design, right? It's doing a decent job of blocking the ambient noise right now for an on-ear. Now without the hat, let's try it without the hat here. A little bit more to the exact shape of your head without the hat on. Look at the components in there. It really is like a watch, like a Swiss made watch. It reminds you of a band in fact. That's the caliber of components in here. Of course with any headphone video, the key factor is listening to them, right? That's important. They could be fancy, they could be Swiss made by hand, but they gotta, they gotta sound good too. So let's give them a shot here. Let's go with this one, I know this song. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit more low end than I expected. The drive in the bass region there. I think part of it is that they seal up around the ear a little bit better than I might have thought with an on-ear style. It's still a very portable headphone, so you're dealing with like a 30 millimeter driver in here. From a sound perspective, I mean they sound good, but it's not like, it's not like blowing me away in the sense that I'm like, oh I've never heard headphones that sound like that. I think the really striking thing about this set is the design. Don't get me wrong, they sound good. You're not gonna be disappointed with the sound, but really the unique characteristic is the fact that they do this. I've never seen anything quite like that. It rolls up almost into a ball. You just get a real feeling of quality in general when you're handling them because you can't find plastic. Will, come on in, man. Check these out. Let's get your take real quick. Will's a designer. You're a designer. Yeah, yeah. I do that kind of stuff. You ever seen something <laughs> like this? No. Look at, at that all. thing. This is crazy. That's wild, man. It's ambitious. You know, I always appreciate these type of ambitious designs. It's really different. It's really different. Yeah. Seem pretty sturdy too. Oh yeah, definitely. Try them on. Are they on there? They're not big enough for you, are they? No, I don't think so. At least not from a hat. It's good, right? I don't know. They're a little small on you. Max them both out. There you go. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. That looks better. I don't think it fits your head as well as it fits mine. <laughs> so what do you really think this is about then? What's this about, this product? I think it's the design. I think I agree with you on that. Some of the, these attributes here could then be applied to various models. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just something that I haven't seen before, let alone, I, I mean, Swiss handmade, Swiss made headphones, not a thing that w w was on my radar. Those are three grand. Some people are a little more rough with their headphones. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you are. To be fair, I think this is mostly a design exercise. Critical listening with Will do. Will's like in another universe right now. Like Will's not even with us anymore. There he goes, Willie do. He's nice knowing him though. It's good. Oh! It's good. Well, no need to yell there, brother. Yeah, it does its job. I mean, 3,000 bucks, you're not spending the three grand on the sound, right? No, no. It's not what it is. It's this, it's this insane design. You wanna, you wanna be the guy to pull that out and be like, oh, it's number 004. Don't you forget it. Nobody's, you haven't seen headphones like that. I mean, that's some Terminator stuff going on there. It's a special look though, hey? I think it's incredibly ambitious. I love products that are ambitious. I'm not sure that this headphone here is gonna replace what I'm already using. Maybe I'm a little too paranoid to be bringing this thing on the airplane. Well, there it is. It's the most expensive headphone ever featured on Unbox Therapy, the Roller. Will he do, ladies and gentlemen? Tom, I'm very excited to bring back one of our favorite sponsors. It's Dollar Shave Club, and they're back with another box to keep you looking fresh so you can keep getting the ladies. Isn't that how it works? I do like them, they're actually pretty good. See, there you go. This time around, look at this. We got our bathroom minutes, little comic for you. We have the executive handle. Have a nice cut of beef, not a nice cut of face. You would agree with that. Oh yeah. Change your blade each week. So here's the thing, okay? I've told you guys in the past, you're at the supermarket, you're trying to get the razors, you're spending a fortune, you're going broke doing it, you end up using it longer because you don't want to go out, bite the bullet and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. So use it longer. Now it's dull. Now it's affecting the skin. It's affecting the complexion. And they don't look like you, Tom. And it's, it's truly a shame because they'll never experience the life you've experienced mm. because of Dollar Shave Club. You get this each month, you change the blade each week, you use the shave butter, and here's the best part, Tom. 
There's a deal right now. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter for only $5. Five bucks? Is that handle weighty? It is. It's a weighty handle. It's good. Okay, so all you need to do to take advantage of the deal that Tom talked about, five bucks for all this for your first month, you just head over to Dollar Shave Club dot com slash unbox therapy best part of that they support this show right here they support tom they support you so you can keep buying the you see how that mm. works so then you stay clean shape you keep your girlfriend it's unbelievable dollarshaveclub.com slash unbox therapy or click the link in the description what is it where do they go what's the url tom dollarshaveclub.com slash unbox therapy boom Another day, another pair of headphones. These ones have something, do something that I've never seen before. And that's saying something because I've probably made more videos about headphones than any other type of gadget. I probably made 50 or, that's actually an interesting trivia question right there. How many headphone videos have been featured on Unbox Therapy? These ones do something different and they're from a new company, in a, an emerging company. What are they called? Ashdown Engineering. These are called Meters headphones. Let's crack this open and find out what makes these headphones unique and whether or not they are your next high-end headphone. A little bit of paperwork here. Ooh, we see a nice image. Deep, dynamic, articulate, tone full. These are just a few of the words that describe the OV-1, that's the name of this particular model. They feature active noise cancellation. That guy is like a punk rock version of me. System of a down seat. Do you see this, Jack? Is that, if I was a little more hardcore, that's what I would be. All right, System of a Down. Jack's a fan, okay, good. You can see it's got this traditional meter. That's like old school music equipment used to have that. There we go. 40 millimeter dome ANC driver, 82.2% reduction, active noise cancellation, 1.2 meter cable. There is the classic BU meter. Some stickers, manuals, and the headphones are here. Yes, sir. That is a nice cable. Right angle connector, gold plated. This is the same cable with the addition, the third point of contact there. Now, this one is gonna have an inline microphone. For your phone, this is the better cable to use. Micro USB to keep them charged up. Quarter inch adapter to go from mini jack to quarter inch, kaboom. Next up we have, ooh, there they are. You see this wobbly little needle in there, this meter? I assume that this is going to react in real time to the music that's being fed into here. These are made out of metal. You can see the way that the ear cup pivots, so even if you have a weird shaped head, and the ear cups are, woof, those are supple, Jack. You ever use the word supple? You touch something like this and you will. Micro USB to charge these up because they are active noise canceling. So this guy just goes up in here, like so. Oh my goodness gracious. These are like earmuffs, like I very isolating from noise. Like this is, you know the stuff that drummers wear? You're a drummer, Jack, you know. Oh, look at that. Just like the old school music studio, Jack. Are you seeing that? How cool is that? Ooh. You hear any bleed right now? You hear nothing. Max volume right now, you hear nothing? Wow, it's like another universe in there. These are some of the most sealed headphones that I've ever listened to. Even at full blast volume, Jack can barely hear. The VU meter just jumping around all pretty and whatnot. Like you're gonna you're gonna get some attention with these, obviously. This isn't just just not something you see frequently. I think I kind of prefer the the EQ setting on there. How about Mellow Jazz? Hmm. Here's the thing to consider, okay? You've got headphones out there, wide variety of headphones. Certain ones attempt to give you a flat or close to flat frequency response so you have like this accurate listening. And then other headphones are more targeted at giving you a dynamic experience. These ones are in that category. Even this Mellow Jazz, it's like the low end is, it's in there, it's deep. It's in the loins. 
as Jack likes to say, where he feels most things, according to Tom. Tom, remember this? Oh, family-oriented, advertiser-friendly. Tom's in a mood today. You want to cheer him up, he only responds to one thing, and it's thumbs. He's looking for your thumb love. How many thumbs you need, Tom? Tom almost got 100,000 the other day when I asked on his behalf, but he didn't hit it. He's very depressed. He's in a bit of a mood. Because ultimately, that's what matters to Tom. The love of others. You're taking it back to the old school. Because you're an old fool who's so cool. If you want to get down, let me show you the way. Let me hear you say. So this is one of those Kickstarter situations. Raised a bunch of money on Kickstarter. It's a completely different type of headphone from anything I've ever tried before. The V-Share, Vi-Share, I think it's V-Share. The main thing here is this really unusual design that allows it to sit on the side of your head differently than any ear cup before using 3D printed components. It's got a really unusual look. What does it say? It doesn't tell you much on the box. If you watch the Kickstarter video, they claim this is like the most comfortable headphone ever. Let's find out if they're telling the truth here. All right, inside the box, we have the second box in the box. Oh, accessories. These are the little contraptions I was telling you about. Clip onto the ear cup and then sort of like, oh, maybe kind of like this. We'll find out. You're gonna catch some looks, that's for sure, if you're rocking these headphones. Be able to hear your surroundings a little bit so you don't feel so confined. If someone approaches you, you might wanna feel their presence as opposed to like, Ugh! I know some of you probably like, man, I don't wanna hear anybody. So they've included separate ear cups for a clothes design as well. These are more traditional looking, will close around your ear and create a more isolating experience when you want to shut the world off. So these are open and closed back designs. Now they are wireless as well, micro USB to charge up and a mini jack cable if you want to use a wired connection. And then, now these also have another feature which is the ability to broadcast the signal that's playing on here to other headphones. Similar to that headphone that Tom and I tried recently in which you could share a single Bluetooth source with multiple headsets. <laughs> Who'd it belong to, man? <laughs> it seems huge. Whoa. <laughs> that's a statement right there. It's got a very padded headband here. There's an on and off switch over here. The ear cups themselves are actually pretty slim. Micro USB down here to charge them up, plus minus for volume, and then you can select between the various sources here depending on where your audio is coming from. An extra set of ear pads. All right, let me just check the quick start real quick. Check the quick start quick. You see how that, Jack, are you awake? Are you still, are you alive over there? Jack's been surviving off of the cake that LG sent us for the last three days. Did they inject it with all the necessary nutrients to keep a man like Jack active? There he is. He's dead. All right. We can't joke about that. You all know we have to do the Jack reveal at 10 million subscribers so he can't die yet. Did I say 10 million or did I mean 100? <laughs> Just tell like five or six friends. If every single one of you tells a friend to subscribe, I don't know, maybe we'll be at 10 million immediately. What a letdown it's gonna be, hey? Wah, wah. Attach the airframes, here we go. There we go. Look at that. Ho, ho, ho. That's a strange look right there, Jack. If that's your goal, you're turning heads, that's for sure. I completely still hear my surroundings, obviously. It's a little odd at first. There's really no pressure point or anything like that. Like, they're just kind of there. What does that look like, Jack? Can you get a good view of it there? Or maybe that's what these pads are for. They can go on these ones. All right, padding. Oh yeah, yeah, the padding is a must. So there is an app. Slide the power switch to on, okay, on. Are these powered up right now? No, you think these are dead? All right, so 
It's been an evening now. Left them in the studio charging. So I have the app downloaded as well. So I'll just power them up and they have lights in them. Jack, can you see those lights in there? Yeah, there it is, Vi. Okay, so we have an equalizer. We can kind of tune our sound a little bit here. Let's go with open medium. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see what this is all about. Is this the real deal? Is this a gimmick? I don't, it is such a weird. Tom, look at these headphones. Don't shake your head at me. Play some mellow jazz, why don't we? Well then. Right now you hear nothing. Come a little bit closer. Oh, this is a kind of a different experience right now. Something a little more modern. This probably has volume on it as well. Oh, there we go. You hear that now. They're gonna bleed out if you wanna listen loud, especially to certain types of music. The sound is bleeding, all right? Not like a closed back headphone, not that you would expect it to. With any kind of open back design, you lose a little bit in the low end, the kind of, the kind of thump. Has my world been altered by this unusual design? No, not, not really. We've still got the closed back ear cups, so these are kind of modular. I should do one and one. Close back, open back, you see that? Let's try this now. I can tell right away before I even play music. This ear in here is isolated. Ooh, ooh. You probably already knew this, but if you're listening to hip hop, you, you want a closed back headphone for the most part because you're looking for the punch. You're looking to get punched in the face, figuratively, of course, unless you're Jack in the bedroom. He's into some weird stuff, you know. Well, he's a camera after all. Or at least that's what you guys tell me. Then now you play the theme to the Twilight Zone. Right now. I would rather have these ear cups, but then, well, well then why is that different than other headphones? But what can I say? I've listened to open back headphones that are a lot better than these. But even then, these headphones aren't incredibly cheap, so it gets weird. But the weird thing here is that the whole package and experience, it, it comes out feeling a little bit cheap, to be honest. It's an innovative approach. I like modular stuff. They're not a gimmick, but the hype is probably not real on these. The hype train has halted and I'm the conductor. The hype is real, maybe it's not. Either way, I'm here to let you know. Let me, uh, let me do what I do here, Jack. See, this is the line right here. You're on this side. Don't you ever come on this side. Today I've got a very important video to share with you. Essentially, what we're aiming to do here is figure out the difference between an $8 headphone and a very similar looking $80 headphone. Now, at the time that I purchased each of these, this was $7.99 and this was $79.99. Now, this brand over here you're familiar with, it's Beats. These are the most affordable over-ear Beats headphones as far as I can tell. It's a wired headphone, sits on top of your ears. And should these be worth 10 times more, than the headphones that are on my left. Over here we have Polaroid, who you probably remember that name as well, but like now they're making headphones. I paid $7.99 for them. If you're wondering why I chose these for this comparison, it's just because they look kind of the same. I mean, look at, for $7.99 you've got inline controls, some microphone, you can answer phone calls, they're foldable. First off, let's crack these open. Change the way you hear sound. Look at this little microfiber bag to carry them in. And I mean, listen, they look good. A leather-like surface that'll touch your ear, a flat cable, so hopefully it won't tangle up too much. There's a microphone here for answering calls. All right, cool, we got it. Not gonna be anywhere near as pleasant as the Beats. Not the greatest first impression, but hey, I don't know. You paid eight bucks, what are you really hoping for here? You see, that's, that's an $8 package right there. Okay, a little bit more flimsy. The white color of the headphone itself is like almost a yellowish. These are lighter weight, no soft touch material on the top. In fact, there's like a little bit of dirt on there kind of it looks like. I don't, maybe these were opened before. <laughs> kind of a bonus on an $8 headphone is a braided cable. These plugs look super similar. It's also got a single button in line. There's also a mic in there. They're lightweight you're probably gonna have a little bit of sound bleed because they're not super tight on the ears. Fold them up. I mean, that gets pretty small right there. 
Ooh, so the adjustment immediately is more smooth and the external noise, kind of the noise of the room and so on, is, is a lot less immediately. I mean, I don't know. I'm starting to think even if we blindfold Tom, he's going to be able to tell just from the feel. Well, we'll blindfold him anyways because that's just... Well, that's fun to do. So we've got an $8 headphone. We've got an $80 headphone. You probably recognize this brand. Mm -hmm. You're probably a little more suspect about this one over here. And what kind of, you're usually, what kind of headphones are you usually listening to music with? I experiment all the time. I'm always changing. Whoa. Load it up, Google Play Music, whatever you want, man. Whatever you're familiar with, critical listening, what's your request? I'm, I'm open to anything. You guys pick. Pick something that's... Is this that's... what we're doing right now? Tom, pick any song, man. Let me think. Oh, wow. See, because it's going to represent him too much. Uh, Yeah, okay. Go with the Tool song. They're not on Apple Music or Google Play. Really? Yeah. You're right. They're 100%. not. 100%. Do like, yeah, do you like Gary Clark Jr. That'd be cool. Oh, okay. Gary Clark Jr. off of Google Play Music. So this is a standard kind of listening scenario. This is how you would have your headphones plugged in. You're getting blindfolded, brother. You want to make any phone calls to loved ones? Oh, you're dead, but he can see through that. Yeah, this is so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> there we go. It's blocking my ears. The world is depending on you, Tom. You want more volume? Mm-hmm. More? That's good. The world is depending on Tom right now. Do they need to spend 80 or can they spend eight? Ready for the next ones? Focus, Tom. What happened there, man? Tell the people what happened. So, the first one was the cheap ones. Yeah, yeah of course. I think you can nail it from the feeling of it. No, the sound is a big thing. Oh! Yeah, huge. The volume difference was massive. When you were talking, when I was listening to the first headphones, I could hear everything you're saying. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't seal around the ears. And it's like a, it's a shallower sound. They're cheap, like they're eight bucks. The sound quality isn't bad for eight dollars. Do you need to go up? Do you need to spend the 80? Or are you getting by with the eight? You're spending the 80, aren't you? Probably. In this scenario right here, you're spending the 80. Probably. He's spending the 80. All right, my turn. Max volume is not that loud. I mean, eight, eight bucks. It's not bad. Eight bucks, okay, hold up. I think a key part of this is just the isolation right away. Oh! <laughs> You want to make beats sound good, just put them up against $8 headphones. What can I say? Pretty much what you expected. $80 headphones sound better than $8 headphones. That ratio is incredibly subjective, though, when it comes to evaluating the difference and how much that might matter to you. Even 17-year-old Tom at McDonald's is still saving up to spend the 80. What is the difference? How much does it matter? We get the $8 headphone, the $80 headphone. If he's going for the $80 headphone, I think what we've discovered here is that most people need to upgrade their headphones. I'll have them linked both down below. Like I said, I think these went up to $12, but really, if you got the extra cash, step your game up. I mean, you can go, you can get crazier than this though. Oh yeah. That's the thing, and then that's where that ratio <laughs> changes. So maybe there's a follow-up video in which we take the $80 versus the 800, and then maybe you're like, eh, I don't know. Give the people some examples of things you can get for $8. A bag of candy at the ball barn. <laughs> Tom loves candy. Send candy addressed to Tom. The address is on the YouTube about page. Weird candy. Close out the video. Me. Oh, man. That's close all, out. That's all you. I close out the say. video. Close out the video. I don't know what to say. Okay, Tom's going to take everything that happened today and boil it down into one word. Go. Uh, fantastic. Spend a little bit more on your audio gear. Your ears will thank you. What is this, a commercial? What are we... Your ears will thank you. Today is an exciting day, my friends. And the reason why is because I'm about to hit you with a deal. A crazy deal. Depending on how aware you are of how legendary this set of headphones in front of me actually is. So recently, Mass Drop got in touch with me and they said, we got these new headphones that are coming out, we would love for you to make a video. I said, let's do it. They're called the HD6XX and what they are is a reissue, a remake, a retake on the legendary HD650 from Sennheiser. Now, if you don't know about those headphones, they sort of started this movement into the 
audiophile style headphone being accessible and available in the average person's home. Open back listening around the ear cup design. That was the HD650 and the HD650, people are still buying them all the time between four and five hundred dollars. That said, Mass Drop, they were like, let's team up with Sennheiser and we think we can do it a step better. We're gonna make a few small tweaks and we're gonna hit the people with a far better price. What is that price, Jack? $200. Limited availability, the HD6XX. This is gonna be a $200 reference class headphone. Wow, a nice box, Sennheiser box to keep them in. Oh, look at those babies. If you've ever seen the 650s before, you know they weren't this color. But now, there's this like deep blue kind of coloring here. And look at these nice giant ear cups on this. That's what I love. I want it to be all the way around the ear. Look how deep that pocket is there. Now I've talked about it in the past, the advantages of an open back. Generally speaking, this gives you a, a wider perception of sound. The ambience and, and the room almost has a personality. If you wanna lean back and get the ultimate experience, at least in my opinion, you probably want something open back. And that's exactly what these are. For what, for 200? Another thing I'm noticing straight away is how lightweight these are. These are made in Ireland, that's interesting. And of course, adjustable, as you see here. The branding, so that you know it's a Mass Drop exclusive collaboration. You can see the Mass Drop logo in that location over there. So the previous version had a much longer cable which is great for at-home listening, but not so useful when you're on the go. They took the 10-foot cable from the 650 and turned it into a 6-foot cable in this case. The other thing they've done for on-the-go listening is giving you a native mini jack termination point. 3.5 millimeter instead of the 6.3 millimeter quarter inch jack which used to be the default termination on the 650. So when your phone is in your pocket, yes, you can now connect these directly to your phone. It looks like these have detachable cables. Let's just verify that. Yes, they do. They're headphones, what are we here for? I mean, we gotta test these babies out. I've got a turntable and a tube amp, but then I'm gonna do the unthinkable. I'm gonna take these beautiful headphones and plug them directly into my phone and see what happens. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Let's just, let's just listen to some music real quick. It's no big deal. If you've never listened to an open back headphone before, there seems to be a lot of detail surrounding each independent instrument. This idea of having a lot of space for each one of those instruments to breathe. Look at that vinyl right there. Look at that beauty. $200, are you kidding me? They claim I can go ahead and chuck these babies straight into my phone. So here we go. Let me tell you something. Your mileage is gonna vary on this depending on the, the power of the amplifier on your particular device. For me, it's like, these are, these are beauty headphones, right? You're gonna wanna get the most out of them. So even on a mobile device, I'd probably recommend some sort of small pocket amplifier just to put a little bit of, just to put a little more juice on the wire because once you heard it like this, you kind of wish that's what you ended up having on the mobile as well, if you know what I'm saying. And that's the unique scenario with the HD6XX. And I know a lot of people wish that they could step up to that different style of listening experience. And believe me, this is a this is a totally different thing from that pair of Beats that you see sitting on a shelf at the local Apple store. It's not the same thing. And the 200 bucks, it's you just might need these in your life. I'm just gonna jump back to. Hotline Miami real quick. Cause that's just, I just wanna go out like that. It's a two for one today. Got two packages. It's the latest and greatest from Turtle Beach. They reached out, they said, Lou, we want you to show the world what we've been working on. I said, I'm your guy. We wanna do it on Unbox Therapy. Let's do it live. A brand new gaming headset, the Stealth 350 VR. It's a gaming headset, which is targeted 
at VR users. It's got a microphone attachment as well, of course, talking back like any other headset, but it's got a VR design. The over-ear design and memory foam have a grooved headband, which is tailor-built for VR comfort. So that means goes along with your VR headset, and you do need a decent headset for a fully immersive VR experience. 50 millimeter speakers, it's important for, as they call it, thundering lows an integrated amp which works for 30 hours via the rechargeable amplifier okay cool now this thing will work with playstation vr ps4 oculus rift htc vive and even mobile vr you can see a picture on the side here with the extra clearance for the vr headset now also they got the stream mic over here now i know a lot of you out there you want to kick off your own YouTube channel, maybe you wanna stream on Twitch, and you need a microphone to get started. Trust me, do not underestimate audio. People want to hear you clearly, loud and clear. You know what I mean? That little chintzy mic, maybe you got hanging down from the earbud. You know the one with the little button on? No! It's not how you get it started. No one's gonna respect you and watch you. In those streams, you're gonna have what, six? Six people watching and you're related to all of them, it's sad. This is cool, so they are the official partner of Twitch. I didn't know that. This stream mic is for console and PC streaming. And then on the back, it has universal compatibility, so Xbox, PS4, PC. It's got adaptive mic patterns with true speed technology, professional processing for EQ, gain, compression, and others. It's got a built-in headphone amp, so you could speak into this and then amplify your headphones for monitoring coming out of there. Personalized voice tuning. So you can personalize the sound of your voice. Where's my knife? First, let's check out the mic because I just finished talking about it. Ooh, this is Turtle Beach. The pursuit of perfection drives us. Oh my goodness. Ready to make everyone sound like a pro, even you. You're the next PewDiePie out there. Could be you. Ooh, I kind of like the styling on that. Ooh, fresh. It's kind of got an old school looking vibe to it. Those old timey microphones like your Elvis. She ain't nothing but a hound dog. Nothing all the time. What's she doing all the time? What do we have here? Must be a nice little base for it. Yes, of course. A large USB cable here. This is cool. It's a heavy duty base. So when that baby's on the desk, you are golden. Even when you get rowdy, this is an adapter for a boom or mic stand. That goes there like that. A large dedicated mic can make a huge difference to your streams or to your videos. There's also a nice big mute button on the front right here. Your mom's screaming at you because you, you're streaming too long and you're not doing your homework. So you got the mute button. Keep it private. This is where all your options exist. So you can connect your headset right here. You've also got dedicated volume. So this essentially becomes your audio interface. So PS4 and PC are on the same setting and Xbox has its own independent setting. And then on the far side, you got your USB port for connecting to whichever system you're using. Let's jump inside the Stealth 350 VR headset. Ooh, nice and light. So you can see the cutout at the top here, adjustable. So some controls in the ear cup, there's power, as well as a microphone mute. It's in that location there. Micro USB to charge it up. Really smooth material on the inside of the ear cup. Plus they fold completely flat. That's a nice touch. Here is your microphone, mini jack cable with a right angle connector, an audio cable for your audio interface, micro USB cable. Oh, that's a bass boost. Tailor your sound, get a little more thump if you want it and turn that down, back that down if you don't. Ooh. Ooh, those fit in there absolutely perfectly. Even with my glasses on, you see how that just fits right in there? I mean, man, I love on the next gen consoles. It just goes right into the controller. It's so convenient. Taking care of dudes. I'm, not taking... I'm just gonna sample it with a little bit of music first. Huge ability to tune the sound with this bass control. If you want the thump, man, you can go after it and get it. More bass, please. Saving Private Ryan Omaha Beach. How's that for sound effects? Pew, pew, tra, ta, 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 ta. pew, pew. So there it is, two new products from Turtle Beach. The Stealth 350 VR, VR specific headset. So you can get immersed and stay immersed. 
be on your couch for weeks at a time. Now we got the stream mic, so you can start your broadcast career, become a famous YouTuber. The rest is history. Be like me. Be like Jack. Okay, so this is a cool one. I do a lot of headphones here on Unbox Therapy. What do I mean by I do? I do that. I don't do the headphones. A lot of headphones show up. I make a lot of videos about headphones. And this is something that I haven't seen before. These are design your own headphones. Street art edition. So they've included some kind of like spray paint, some markers. You walk around and they're like, hey, hey, who, who does those headphones? Like I did those headphones. Isn't it eclectic? So it's from a company called Seedling. Design your own virtual reality. Use a maze app. Design your own marble maze. I mean, I don't know how that ties in. Oh, a DIY virtual reality viewer. This is for somebody who wants to get a little bit crafty, wants to be unique. Let's go ahead, jump inside here and see what I can, see what I can do. We got the headphones. Kind of remind me of some Sony's I'm familiar with. So they're white for good reason. Markers. Red, orange, green, yellow, and a couple of spray paints as well. Now that's cool what they did. It's like a pump spray, because you can't put an aerosol can in here. Now what's up with these? This feels like a sticker material. What do you do? You cut out your own sticker? Yeah. That stick, you cut out some shapes, stick that on there somewhere. I don't really know. It's, it's the beauty of it. It's up to you. All right, fine. I mean, you could do like a Wu-Tang. That's what I should do, Wu-Tang headphones. DIY Wu-Tang headphones. The headline. I just found the headline live in front of all of you. I'm doing Wu-Tang headphones. If it helps, sketch your ideas on a piece of scratch paper before you start. You'll create reverse stencils to use with your spray paint. Cut shapes out of the adhesive paper in your kit and peel the backing off. Look at us, we're like, we're graffiti artists instantly. This is kind of the Wu-Tang yellow, but I'm worried about the way the yellow shows up against the white. Maybe we should do the Wu-Tang not in yellow. Maybe it should be in red, a red spray. Spray it on there, cover the whole thing with the stencil in the middle and spray the Wu-Tang W right on each ear cup. Okay, I got an idea, I got an idea, I got an idea. Get a Wu-Tang logo on my phone and trace it. What do you think? It probably would show up better if there was less light here. Yep. So I just gotta trace it, then transfer it to the sticky paper and I'm gonna do the negative space. So color in the perimeter so that the Wu-Tang logo is the white. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm getting artistic over here, right? Give me a break. <laughs> That'll do the trick. Okay, so I do have these little precise scissors somewhere on here. World's most giant Swiss Army knife. I did a video on this. You should go check it out, actually. Now, of course, you could do this with anything that gets you motivated. I mean, you all saw how motivated I got when I got the Wu-Tang idea, but it's completely up to you. Whoa, that's not bad. Look at my little Wu-Tang W right there. That's really not bad, okay, cool. Next thing to do is get it on the sticky paper to make my stencil. If only I could have seen through this and then... Okay, cool. What do I cut that out now? Who would have thought it's DIY with Lou? I never thought this day would come. I feel like a kid right now. Ha! <laughs> okay, sweet. Why is this so much fun? This is more fun than it should be. All right. What do I do? Shake it up? I don't know. We're about to find out. Ooh. Look at that splatter. Are we gonna be able to get this off the table, Jack? We're gonna have to leave that for a while. All right, so. I got crazy with the paint, as you can tell. Probably not what you're gonna do. Maybe you'll get the masking tape out and be a little more precise, but who cares? We're going graffiti style. Wu-Tang is like a religion, Jack. I bomb atomically. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define how I be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically performed armed robberies flee with the lottery. Possibly they spotted me. That's what I'm talking about. I left it to dry. Now I gotta try and peel that. Wu-Tang logo out of there. You only live once, as the kids say. <laughs> yeah. Listen. All right, there's a reason this show is not called Art Class with Lou, right? The spray cans that are included 
my feeling on that is it's kind of more of a distance deal. You know, where you get this kind of spatter. Let me just get some marker going a little bit, just see what happens here. Yeah, I mean like, this is probably a terrible idea. Oh dear God, what have I done? Did you really expect anything less from me though? Let's be honest here. And there's kids out there in the audience, you're one of them that could have done a better job for sure. I want you to do a much better job than this and send me a picture. This looks so much worse with the green now. I mean, it looks disgusting. You know what, I realized I haven't even listened to these yet. I mean, the headphones, they don't sound that bad. They work. You know what else, Jack? Look at this, you can pull the ear cups off. The, off. Paint-wise, that would have been nice. You know what, Wu-Tang, I apologize sincerely for this. If you want to hit me up, we do a collab. Hire some professionals and make the real Wu-Tang headphones. As the world turns, I spread like germs. Bless the globe with the pestilence, cause the hard-headed never learn. So you guys know I've covered a lot of different headphones here on Unbox Therapy. It, it might be the most popular product category in terms of like total uploads. Today though, we got something that's a little bit different from anything that's been featured previously. They got 12 drivers. Now if you're unfamiliar with what a driver is, that's the actual speaker unit inside of your headphones. Now you can see they're not all the same size because each one is going to perform a different function. Maybe you'll be able to have better spatial awareness as far as where that sound is coming from. I'm thinking about during video games, possibly while watching an action movie or something like that. But I was looking at the reviews for these online and a lot of people are just saying they love them for music. So I'm kind of curious about how those different functions are gonna make the most out of six separate speaker units inside of each ear cup. These are wireless as well with Bluetooth range up to 32 feet, they say. My expectations are pretty high because they are an expensive set of headphones. They're called the UFO Plus, by the way. Ooh, so far unboxing experience kind of nice. Got some magnets involved, you know, that's what I'm always looking for. Right. On the side here, some paperwork, a nice carrying case for this. Hard shell. Ooh. Here are the headphones, they fold up. It's an over ear style. I like big ear cups, all right? I find it more comfortable. I find that it isolates better for me. Ooh, they do spin up, so if you want to get your DJ on, a port for the cable. I guess that just means you could pick whichever is more convenient for you. Controls appear to be over here on the right ear cup. That's an actual button there. If I had to guess, probably volume up, down, next track, back, play, pause, answer phone calls. A cool cable here. It's got a coiled portion to it, so you can feel like a real DJ temporarily. And then it also has a screw-on locking adapter. You've got the mini jack connector. Screw that on, though. That's if you want to interface with like a mixing board that uses the quarter inch adapter as opposed to the mini jack. Also in the box, a flat micro USB cable to charge those up. Ooh. Pull out my fancy new Pixel XL. Oh yes, enjoying it very much. Left ear cup, right ear cup. They're big. I I'm pretty sure you're not going to win fashion points for these ones. What about the sound? They're headphones, Lou. That's what we're here for. All right. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that the <clears throat> the that's the most low end I have ever heard on any headphones ever. Brain shattering bass. It is thick. When that bass kicks in, it's like I mean, it's like a subwoofer in there. It's gonna be a, a, a subjective thing, but my goodness. If you want bass, these got it. I wanna try some surround sound style stuff. Surround sound test. Yeah, this will be good. Oh, oh, it's like a shotgun back here. It's over here. It's not like a test like this wouldn't be represented on a regular set of headphones. So for a surround sound test, what you're looking for is that discrepancy between like sort of way back here. I could easily identify the location of that sound in this headset. I just noticed something else that's cool here. You can actually connect this headset to two different mobile phones. Now the reason that's cool, you could have a couple of different audio sources feeding into it. Um, there's a microphone, should I do a phone call? Of course I'm gonna give Ryan a call. Yo, what's going on man? Well I'm just happy you finally picked up the phone man. People here on Unbox Therapy 
They miss you, they wanna see more of you, and more importantly, right now, they want your feedback on how I sound. Uh, so I think it's about nine out of 10. Uh, there's not much, there's no distortion, it's pretty clear. Um, I mean, the volume's pretty good. I don't know on your end how loud it is, but I'd use it, whatever it is. <laughs> Ryan, the people miss you. What do you have to say to them? You took my, my only thing I had away from me. I was a, I thought I was the food guy. Now, now your boy Austin, he rolls in. Maybe it's because, is it because I'm not available? Is that why? Name your price. How many likes do you need to, to come back? Ah, uh, jeez. I don't want to put this on the people. You but know, it's got to be on the people. If you guys want me to come back, yeah, okay, 50,000 likes and I'll come back. There you go. There you go. Holy shit, I thought we were never going to hear it. Okay, later, Ryan. Thank you. Why not pop these open and make sure there's actually six separate speaker units and what they look like. I popped this ear cup off. There you can see the unit itself. Okay, and then pop this out. And there you can see the biggest unit of all on the back there. And you can see the separate wires going to the remaining speakers. These are the five smaller speaker units. And then in the center here, that's the one that's on the back. They're not lying. Six total speaker units in each ear cup. If you wanna get energized, it's hard to find a version of energy as intense as that bass thump. You feel like you're getting kicked in the side of the skull by the thump? It's hard not to get motivated. You're a kid, there's a bully you're about to go after. Okay, I don't recommend. Probably just tell your teacher or something, all right? No, don't tell your teacher. Get some DMX, get these headphones, and show that kid what's up! There's one thing I haven't done in a very long time here on the channel, and that's make a video about Beats headphones. Now, they're very popular. They recently got purchased by Apple, and that has all kinds of implications, and that's the reason for this video right here. But in general, these are very expensive headphones, and they're not going to be for everybody. That said, the Beats Solo 3 Wireless are the first headphones available to take advantage of Apple's new pairing process. Of course, we'll be testing them out as well. On the back here, you can see wireless Bluetooth, battery for 40 hours, five minute charge equals three hours of play. That's, I mean, that's pretty good. Special edition rose gold. Look at this. Whoo! Very factory fresh inside. Nice little carrying pouch. A carabiner. When Jack was a kid, his nickname was actually Beans. So let's bring it back. Hit the comments section. Say hello to Beans. Let's see how many beans we can get in the comments section. Ain't that right, Beans? And then there's a cable. You might want to use these with something other than an iPhone. I like to use them on the airplane. And of course, as you know, there's no Bluetooth to the airplane's entertainment system. And every so often, you've got You've got a banger on there that you just need to watch. Are you gonna get their cheese ball headphones they've got on the airplane? Or are you gonna use your own? Anyway, it's in there. Unboxing experience A plus as usual. Factory fresh smell on another level. Look at that rose gold. Rep the rose gold, folks. For now, these are the very first ones that have this new streamlined wireless pairing process. Adjustable. The ear cups are on ear style. Ooh, see you got a button there, play pause. This is where you'll connect your cable if you choose to go that route. Here's your micro USB for charging it up and here's your power indicator, which shows that I've got full battery right now and this guy is starting to flash, assuming that it is ready to be paired to a phone. So look, oh my, came right, I didn't do, I didn't do anything. Unlock to connect, okay, click there, touch ID, connecting. Done. Shows me the battery life, 100% battery life, and I'm done. It's the little things. So now, if you're using the same iCloud account across devices, those devices now recognize the existence of these headphones. If it's a laptop, an iPad, an Apple Watch, it all interacts like a happy family. Let's test out the sound. Do I have SoundCloud on here yet? Come on, Lou, man, get your act together. Look at that, I got the RoboCop still on there. I told you already, Total Recall, Terminator, Bloodsport. Van Damme in the day? Damn! I need to tell you, I need to do something about the Beats thing here. Super popular. Then you got us people on the internet and we're all like, there are other headphones in the world. And uh, have you ever heard of Sennheiser and vari various other German names? <laughs> Tech people, just chill out a little bit, all right, please. Because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're putting yourself in a silo and you're isolating yourself from the rest of the world. The rest of the world is complicated. 
Just like everywhere else in life, perception is reality. There's marketing, there's endorsements, there's all, it's a whole package. You don't walk up to some woman with the Gucci bag and slap it out of there and go, you could have been carrying a shopping bag. This is a package deal. And in reality, if you want a certain image, you always pay for that image. Branding, it's sophisticated. If LeBron James has the headphones on for years, it matters. That is going to affect perception. Maybe my coffee was extra strong today. Okay. I feel like this product, the Beats brand, it's not as good as people think, but it's not as bad as people think. If you know what I'm saying. There's an accentuation on the low end. They're expensive. That I will agree with you on. The ease of connectivity, that's gonna be meaningful to people. That's gonna be valuable to people. Stop harassing people who wear rose gold headphones. They're enjoying themselves just like you. I'm just gonna get lost in these ro rose gold solos. All right, leave me alone. Sleep phones. You heard about them first here on the channel previously, but that's not the whole story. It's more complicated. I made a video about the like baseline sleep phones, these things that you wear that are headphones, but you sleep with them on, they're comfy. But after that video went live, the company reached out to me and they're like, Lou, thanks for making the video, but those are not our best product. We've taken some of your concerns and other people's concerns and put them into a newer, better version. This is Sleep Bones 2.0. Still sleeping. These ones have a new material, so my, my complaint previously was that they were too hot. I was getting a little warm under there. A little hot under the collar. They're Bluetooth now, no cords, no strangling in your sleep, and Supposedly, they're better sounding. So what a package. 10 to 13 hours of playtime on a single charge, machine washable, and streams up to 30 feet away. Look at the packaging game. Upgraded, okay. Wow, there's a lot more packaging here. USB cable, micro USB for charging this up. I hope it has a little bit of a charge. And is this the, oh some troubleshooting and oh my yes yes that material is much nicer it's like uh kind of like that under armor nike dry fit high tech situation god why don't you give me a call when i'm making a video hello i think i found the button press and hold for three seconds to turn it off what about on oh yeah oh never mind okay it came right up the way this works you've got two actual uh, speakers in here, right? They're sewn in there, they fit over top of your ears. These ones actually feel even more low profile than the last ones. The controls and electronics are in the back here, and there's a button which is on the seam. Oh yes, this is much more com- they were right, they weren't lying. That is much more comfortable and cool. If you're like me, before you go to bed, you listen to podcasts, you listen to some calming music, you listen to some meditation vibes this right here man are you kidding me maybe you're not even sleeping maybe you're just on the couch you're trying to find a comfy location and you got the big headphones on you're just trying to watch your videos in peace this is about comfort you've been on an airplane before you can't get how do they get that measurement right how do they know the distance the ears You're not doing that with normal headphones. Leaning. Earbuds. You still got the pain in the ear canal. You don't need that in your life. Improve your life. Sleep phone. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today 
we are going to be checking out what might be the most highly regarded, high-end set of headphones on planet Earth. These are the legendary HD 800 from Sennheiser. There's a link in the description so you can check them out, but just be warned, a little bit pricey. But hey, on the bleeding edge, when you're looking at F1 cars, you don't expect to pay Honda Civic prices, do you? Just like the F1 car. So we're gonna listen together, you and I. But it's not just about the headphones. I've also got a special amplifier, which is tuned to be paired with the HD800, the HDVD800. Sennheiser, you know the deal. These guys are at the top of the game and have been forever with a German name like that. I mean, who knows? They're sitting around testing, tinkering, twisting. Let's start with the headphones. You can tell this is a giant box. They're giant headphones. When you have big drivers on each ear, it's gonna be big. Also, these are meant for at-home listening. Oh. oh! Try and take that all in. Try and like absorb what that might mean to you. They got like the satin in here. That's some Terminator looking stuff right there. Ho, 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 ho. Manufacturing number as well as made in Germany. It's all about sort of angling the transducer on the inside, keeping the back open, quarter inch termination point here, and an incredibly thick, durable cable. You're listening to this on headphones that in most cases have been tuned dynamically to give you contrast, the impression of dynamics. A headphone like this is aiming to reproduce as accurately as possible the original recording. So what Sennheiser has here an amp to sort of back up the transparency associated with these particular headphones. Wow. I mean, you got the window here, a number of different ways to interface with the amp. As you can see, analog ins, analog outs. <whistles> Who's better than you right now? Okay, so I've got like a basic turntable over here and I've got some records. Black Sabbath, Super Ape, Jay Dilla. Black Sabbath Paranoid, unbelievable. All right. Says War Pigs. Can I get deep with you for a minute? First off, that's the longest period of time. I've ever spent here on Unbox Therapy with my mouth shut. I knew there was a video happening. I went somewhere else for a minute. Seriously, when you set it up like this, you get the vinyl out, you get the amplifier, you get yourself a nice set of headphones. Part of it is about the ritual. Everybody's saying, oh, vinyl hipsters. I can't tell the difference. Give me my MP3. All right, I, I feel you. It's about the whole package. I mean, think about it. When's the last time you even sat down and listened to a song that length straight through? Not doing anything else. Not on your computer, not cleaning dirty dishes. I mean, you just, you just sat there. You shift your commitment and you start to look at things a little bit differently. Maybe in a slightly old school fashion where the kind of critical listening you're doing, the attention you're paying, and ultimately your evaluation of the music changes based on that. Do I sound like an old man right now? Maybe. I felt like I was in the studio. Seriously, I felt like I was, uh, was Ozzy Osbourne. I felt like Jack was Ozzy Osbourne. Awareness, that's the word I wanna use, awareness. You just feel aware of everything that's happening. There's a lot of separation between the various instrumental components. Another one that showed up in the mail, it's called Super Ape. I'm visualizing. I had a very like warm, warm feeling inside there. Next up, Jay Dilla. I'm hearing in some of that instrumentation like slightly more clarity, more definition. What can I say to you guys? It's not gonna be for everybody. But if you have the means and the love of music and you want to interpret it possibly closer to the way the artist intended, it's hard to imagine getting closer than where I just got. 
What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today I've got some new age stuff. You may have heard the rumor that the next generation of iPhone, the iPhone 7 or beyond, may be ditching the traditional headphone jack. Now, calm down. I know there's a lot of people with high-end audio gear that uses that jack and I feel your pain. There is an upside, which is the fact that generally speaking, those little headphone amplifiers on your phones are not that great. And this company, Odyssey, has come out with what might be the first high-end pair of headphones to bypass the mini jack connector. They have a lightning connector, so it goes straight into the lightning port. What can happen is the amp and DAC can be in the actual headphone rather than the phone. A, a, a way to think about this is essentially in bypassing that tiny little headphone jack, you can experience higher quality audio from the source. These are on-ear planar magnetic headphones. This is what that DAC slash amp that I'm talking about looks like. Our drivers are three times larger for better bass and wide frequency response. Interesting. Handcrafted in Costa Mesa, California. Designed and built in the USA. You don't see that very often, Jack. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So the first thing you see, this connector presented to you. That is interesting, the way they've designed these little guys to fit into each ear cup. Here's your inline remote with microphone and all the advanced electronics, the DAC, the amp, it's all right in there. Here are, oh! Ooh. Wow! Those feel incredible. That is some of the softest leather I have ever felt on a headphone in my entire life. Wow! Smooth mechanism, no clicks. What feels like a suede, carrying case. Wow. Handwritten certificate of authenticity. Burned in as well. Headphones generally get better as you listen to them longer. They've done that in advance for you, so they're, they're good to go right out of the box. So we've also got an adapter. And look at this. Okay, so you have the old fashioned mini jack. Let's first test out this cable. They connect, but then they kind of curve around to follow the design line of the actual headphone. Ooh. So the app is now open. Holy smokes. We got an equalizer straight away. If you don't like the signature of the headphones, so what? Simply go ahead and switch it up. Ho 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 ho. Sorry guys, I'm just, I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> I would say detail, the word I want to use is detail. I was trying to think up the word as I was listening there. What was the word? It's detail. Punch and detail. That's how I want to describe them. You've still got the mini jack. So here's what we do now. I need to blind test it. Okay, quickly ch change me to the other, the other connection. Okay, this, this is the uh, lightning. Yeah, yeah. There's just a little more to it. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's uh, it's a little bit better. But that said, I mean, they say it sounds great on either connector. Plus, the genuine materials, the build construction. I'm in. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today it is another collaboration with Mass Drop. In front of me are some luxury headphones. They feature mahogany, fine mahogany. You guys know I like wood, wood makes it good. These my friends are an exclusive headphone collaboration between Fostex and Mass Drop. They're called the TX-X. Zero, zero. Step it up a notch. Step up their listening 
experience, maybe get some outboard gear, maybe get a tube amp like I've got over here. People who, who, who they want the best. So these are 399 bucks. They're only available for two weeks. So if you wanna jump in on this deal, the link will be in the description. The headphone they're based on pre mass drop collaboration are like $1,500. Essentially what you're looking at here is a way to listen for extended sessions, have a lot of comfort, have premium materials, and hopefully do justice to uncompressed audio, whether it's coming from a vinyl or it happens to be a high resolution digital file. All right, what do we got spec wise? 50 millimeter drivers with over one Tesla of magnetic flux density. This, this sounds like back to the future, Jack. The Biodyna diaphragm is made of biocellulose material. Oh my goodness. But I just wanna listen to the damn things. I think I pulled the whole deal out. These guys have a long history in the game. What was, how long they been at it? 1949 was it, Jack? Oh my, fine mahogany. That's a look right there. Oh my, look how thick that cable is. Braided, this is, this is a little mini zone out factory here. Whether it's Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, carrying case, this is important. Oh my, holy padding. Wow. Ooh. That mechanical click, super comfy. I have the Fuji's record over here, the world famous, the score. Now obviously due to copyright restrictions, you will not be hearing this. Instead, you will be hearing me hearing this. Oh, the classic crackle. Look at me, I'm sitting here. I got mahogany headphones. I got a tube amplifier. And I'm zoning out to the Fugees. Unbelievable. And the headphones, they sound great. What do you mean, of course they sound great. You know, I've been listening to a lot of open back headphones and sometimes I forget what can be achieved with a closed back design. From that thump perspective, that like, that boom, that thump. You know what I mean? That boom. Okay, these are special. What can I say? I don't know. They're super premium. They're available for two weeks. If you're looking to step your game up, this is gonna be the way to do it. I'm gonna go back to my mahogany fantasy land. Leave me alone. This is a nightmare. This is the worst thing I've ever featured on Unbox Therapy. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and this is a follow up to the previous video, the top five reasons to choose over ear headphones when compared to in ear. This one is dedicated to the top five reasons that you might choose in ear headphones instead of over ear. In front of me I have some exclusives once again from Mass Drop, also from Hi-Fi Man. These are a re-release, they're called the RE00. Essentially what we're looking at, just like the over-ear model, is a heavily reduced price to go along with the influx of demand and orders that will come in from you guys. So this is an all metal construction, nine millimeter driver. You've got a braided style cable, couple of different ear tips. If you wanna check that out, link in the description, you can go ahead and participate. Five reasons you wanna choose in-ear headphones when compared to over-ear. Number one, travel. These are tiny, all right? This might seem obvious to you, but this is gonna go in anything, a pocket, a bag, it's gonna go with you and you're not even gonna notice it. But the other reason travel wise, I've been on certain airlines where when you're about to take off, they're like, hey dude, with the big over ear headphones, you're obnoxious, this is dangerous, God knows what their reasoning is, but often they force me to switch to in ear style headphones. So if you're on the move and you wanna want something that can fit in your pocket, purse or bag, in ear is the way to go. Number two, smaller drivers, smaller speaker units that fit closer to your eardrum don't require as much power to be amplified. So in general, 
in-ear headphones are going to be easier to drive. You won't necessarily need an outboard amplifier or any kind of fancy gear. Just plug these babies into your smartphone and experience what they were designed to do, reproduce sound from a tiny little headphone jack and amplifier. Number three, exercise, activity, jogging, lifting weights, jack doing the body pump. Obviously, these are going to be more convenient for most people. You don't have to be as worried about them falling off of your head. An over-ear headphone, you get heated up, you're sweating, it's covering. I hate being hot. I keep the AC in here on freeze mode. Jack hates it. Number four, price. These guys here, as I said, are about 35 bucks, just over $30. And in exchange for quite surprising sound quality, at least in the case of this particular model, usually when you step into the realm of over-ears, you're going to pay a little bit more. So if you're looking to get in at a low price point, generally speaking, in-ears will deliver more for less. Point number five. This one's a little bit interesting. It's a word. Is it even a word? Inconspicuousness? Yeah, sure. Why not? This is like stealth mode. You're walking around, you're at the grocery store, maybe you're in class. I didn't tell you to do it. Kind of, uh, you know, have your little secret agent lifestyle while you listen to your tunes. Some people just don't like the style of having giant headphones on, and I can understand that. These just blend in better. So there you have it, the top five reasons to choose in-ear headphones. But I will say, in conclusion, there's no perfect headphone, obviously. And if you're a guy like me, or a guy like you, if you're an enthusiast, chances are you probably want to have a pair of each. This happens to be an awesome opportunity to get two cool pairs of headphones, some in-ears, and some over-ears from Hi-Fi Man. The quantities are limited, as I said before, special collaboration between Mass Drop, Hi-Fi Man, and Unbox Therapy. If you want to learn more, the links are in the description. I think you guys are going to get great value out of these two headphone options for an open back over-ear and an in-ear. There you have it. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today I'm going to tell you about the top five reasons to choose over-ear headphones like these. In the top five reasons to choose over-ear headphones when compared to those little dinky in-ear earbuds or otherwise. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the brand new Hi-Fi Man HE350. A little bit about these headphones. Open back design, premium materials, huge 50 millimeter drivers and available exclusively at mass drop and temporarily. This is a collaboration, a relaunch of a classic these things are a huge drop off of the retail cost. They're available for about 100 bucks, and to be quite honest, it's gonna be difficult to find headphones of this caliber at that price point. So if you wanna get in on the action, link in the description, go check it out. So why over-ear headphones? Number one, the driver. These have giant 50 millimeter drivers, and no matter what you do in an in-ear style headphone, you simply will not have as big of a speaker on your head. What does this mean for you? Generally speaking, a better listening experience, bigger driver, more sound. This is Acoustics 101. You can have a big driver that's terrible. You can have a small driver that's incredible. But in general, general terms, these guys are going to have bigger drivers which do a better job most of the time at reproducing a wider frequency range all the way down to those low frequencies that we all love. Number two, longer listening sessions. So with this set of headphones I've got here, this is a pretty lightweight over ear and it's adjustable. So chances are this is gonna be comfortable for you to wear for very long periods of time where the inside of your ear generally speaking is gonna be more susceptible to fatigue so you can throw a pair of these on and three hours can float by as you listen to your Pink Floyd or whatever it is that you choose. Plus, the adjustability means that they're gonna fit better for more people. Number three, sound stage. This is terminology that gets thrown around in the audio world and with an open back design, the experience you have is a lot more similar to what it's like to be in a live venue where it kind of 
it kind of feels like sound is coming from a, a further distance away, like you are in an environment of sound. It's very difficult to have this very wide sound stage that comes with an open back with an in-ear design. Number four, at home listening. Generally speaking, when you've got a setup, you got a record player, you might have one of these guys right down here. I've actually got a dark voice tube amplifier like this one. Generally speaking, you're gonna wanna give them something that's easy to put on, easy to share. You're not gonna have those kind of hygiene issues with in-ear headphones. So for those kinds of social listening environments, maybe in the living room or in your bedroom or so on, these are just gonna be a little bit easier to pass around. The fifth reason why you should choose over-ear headphones when compared to in-ear is for gaming or movies. Anything that's mixed in a kind of potentially surround environment. When you're in a game and you hear, you know, a gunshot coming from a particular direction, that larger driver on the outside of your ear is gonna do a really good job of helping you identify the exact location of that sound. These things are gonna do a fantastic job of delivering that. So there you have it, that's five reasons, the most important reasons to me to choose over-ear headphones when compared to in-ear style. If you wanna jump on the mass drop for the HE350 become one of the few people on the planet to actually have these headphones at this price. Click the link in the description and also stay tuned because coming up in the next video tomorrow, it's gonna be the top five reasons to pick in-ear headphones compared to over ear. All right guys, new ultimatum. Before the video starts, Jack has told me, he has said 50,000 thumbs up on this video and he will come to your hometown to visit the mayor and you and your family naked. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today we are gonna be looking at something that's completely outlandish. You're in the comment section right now saying, Lou, this makes no sense, I feel uncomfortable. Why are you showing me something so strange? And some of you might even say useless. These are 24 karat gold headphones for the true boss players that are out there. You know who you are. Okay, really, prob I'm gonna be, I mean, who really? 24 karat, they're made by Monster. These, of course, are the geniuses behind the Beats by Dre. Apple bought Beats. Where's Monster left? Monster's left out in the cold, like an ex-girlfriend. Woo! In the absence of Dre, you do what anyone would do. You cover it in gold. This is for those DJs. You're at the club, and everybody's having a good time, and they're like, there is the god of the music over there. Which one? Who are you pointing at? The man in the gold. Live life out loud with crystal clear audio perfection. You're not afraid of showing who you are with the brilliant look of 24K. Are they implying that the gold plating affects the sound? Of course it does. Ooh. Look, I mean, you've got a note from the head monster, the head monster. Hi, I've got a meeting at the office today. Oh, who's it with? The head monster. You got a cleaning cloth, a user manual, telling you how the ear works. Accessories are, ooh, that's actually a kind of nice little case there. Silky. Inside I feel an adapter too. Options for cables, so you have the straight cable with the microphone. You have the DJ cable. Here's the gold. This is what you all came here for. The build feels pretty sturdy here. Very solid. 24 karat, legit gold, 24 karat gold. Adjustable, 24 karat gold plated headphones. What a world we live in, guys. Can I be a DJ yet? Am I DJ ready? No? If you want to catch some looks, if you want to get some attention, I can pretty much guarantee this is the way to do it. How do they sound, you say? The moment of truth. What have we here?
like you would completely expect, the emphasis here is on bass. To be quite honest, in this particular case, I can pretty confidently say that what you're paying for here is an aesthetic, a style. So I'm not out here to say that like to somebody this doesn't sound good. I'm just saying for like the eight million dollars that they cost, that's accurate, right, Jack? You're probably paying for some gold there. The man with the golden headphones could be you. And everybody else will be sitting over here bitching about sound quality. Meanwhile, you're doing donuts in a McLaren F1 on your way to a hot tub full of women. When you're on the couch and you have to input text, ah, drives you crazy. You're like, click, click, nightmare. Yo, Ryan, can we film now or no? <laughs> headphones! Make a lot of videos about headphones. They're very popular. It's part of your style. Sound is important too. But the thing is, how do you differentiate yourself? Everybody's got some Beats on or they got Apple ear pods. You're trying to take it to some different place. If you want to stand out, you're not going to see these every day. They're called Glow and they're the world's first laser headphones. Whatever that means, the cords actually are like they're bright, they glow at night. If you're a jogger, a biker, late at night, now you got the protection of being more visible. So what do we got here? All right, back of the box, see the rhythm? The laser light in the glow headphones pulsates to the beat of the music. That's cool. The brightest headphones around, Glow is the world's first product to use Fibrance, a special light diffusing fiber from Corning, the same folks who make Gorilla Glass. Jack and I use a Corning cable, optical cable, to share a Thunderbolt drive. So there you go, Corning. We're in a family, apparently. Give me a call, Corning. They do come in different colors, I believe. These ones are blue, and also, they are not cheap. Anything like this that's a world's first is almost always gonna be somewhat expensive, so. Ooh, be bold, be seen. So you get this cool case. I guess that's a place to keep them even after the fact. I would think so, you're not gonna throw that out. Micro USB cable with like the half style USB on the other end. Earbud style pieces and then there's also the ear hook style. If you're a guy like Jack, with the, the giant, like with a very, like the large sized ears, Probably none of these will work for you. There's an app to go with it, Android and iOS. Okay, cool. Padded travel case, and then a little bag inside as well. Ooh, okay. You can see on the inside here, they're clear, and then there's these exposed, obviously, fiber optic wires, and those are gonna be the things that glow. So fiber optics, not just good for data transmission and fast internet connections, but also, for being flamboyant on the street. Now the cable stops at this controller here and then this terminates into a braided 3.5 millimeter cable. This section here has a clip on it, a switch here for turning the unit on and on. Oh, I saw some glow. Okay, 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 okay. I'm getting pumped up now. That's a pretty nice fit. It's, it's an ear canal style, so there's pretty decent isolation. So I'm gonna play some music, hold up. Oh my goodness. You want to dim some lights? Can I just say, like, side note, not just flashy, but they sound good. I'm glad they didn't half-step it. These sound way better than a, a stock earbud. Yeah, remote's functioning. Volume up, volume down, functioning perfectly. There are different glow modes here. It can glow to the music. It can pulsate. Just cuz. It can be constantly on. And then off completely. You can also set the vibrance of it from low, medium, high. Glow notifications! That's cool. Ooh. They call themselves glow. They're headphones that glow. How can you hate on that? You add a little glow to your headphones and next thing you know, you're making a left where you used to make a right. Talking to a strange woman that you otherwise would have passed by. So it's probably no surprise to you that I'm a little bit of a, an enthusiast when it comes to headphones. Over the years, I must have tried hundreds of headphones and I'm always on the lookout. What is that next? perfect, best 
headphone. Now there's so many different headphones on the market. Everything from audiophile, at home listening, open back headphones, noise canceling headphones, earbuds, fully wireless earbuds, AirPods. In front of me right now is what I think is the new champ. Everyday carry, put it in the bag, take it on the airplane headphone. This is the PXC 550 wireless. I mean, you could use it wired as well. Adaptive noise canceling headphone. And that's an important part of the title right here on the front of the box. Just regular noise canceling headphones are a little bit annoying to me. Reason for that is because a lot of them are locked into one form of noise cancellation, either on or off. These ones, they can adapt on their own up to 30 hours of battery life. Collapsible. Yes, I want an over the ear headphone, but it's gotta be portable. You're wondering, wait, how does he know so much? Why does he have such a strong opinion about this headphone? It's in the box still. No, it's not, all right, I fooled you. It's over here, I've been using it, okay? I had a strong intuition that this was gonna be the go-to. So I was like, let me pull it out, use it for a little while, and let me confirm that it's the go-to. Touch panels on the side, very intuitive. You can even double tap for a talk through function. And that's a cool little feature so you can hear people around you without taking the headphones off. Very intuitive for skipping tracks, swipe forward, swipe back, volume up and down. Now coming back to the versatility thing, you're talking about wireless, you're talking about using it with a cable, you're talking about an airline adapter, a quarter inch adapter, and a travel case. Many different ways to listen. And the remaining features over here, Bluetooth 4.2, NFC pairing, tap it to your phone and just forget about it. APTX, hi-fi sound. Noise Guard is actually using four different microphones on this headset. Of course, also a microphone for you to speak into if you're using this to answer phone calls and so on. All right, so it's out of the box, and this is the little travel pouch. As you can tell, that is a slim little form factor right there. Look at that little thing, tiny. And then there's a pouch with all your adapters in it. I tested out the cable as well. Unfortunately had to use an adapter with the Pixel 2 XL. Inline microphone right here. A little control button there as well in case you don't wanna reach up and touch the side panel. Honestly, there's something small here that just really, it really turned me right on, okay? Cause it's how the headphones turn on. Never mind a switch. You just fold them out and flip them like this, like you're gonna wear them. And then a little voice comes on, power on. I mean, how genius is that? Simple, you never forget to turn them off. We have a hardware control for the amount of noise cancellation from zero all the way to one and then 50% in the middle. Also, an effects button. Depending on what you're listening to, you can press this guy here and switch the way that the headphones perform. And then lastly, this is probably my favorite switch, inside of the ear cup, a dedicated Bluetooth switch. So you know if Bluetooth is on or off, no interpretation of that. Look, Bluetooth is on, great. Okay, now I feel like I need to put this on to explain why this might be the ultimate right here. I put this on. It's a nice seal around the ear. Look at the shape of this ear cup, okay? It's the shape of a human ear. You get the most streamlined form factor, less material, lighter weight. These are crazy lightweight. The whole purpose is to be able to enjoy either music or movies or so on for extended periods of time. If this thing starts to dig into your head, what does it matter how good it sounds? Came in the other day, Will had his pair on. I said, Will, what do you say, man? Yeah, I don't even notice it. That's what he says, okay? So it's not just me. Nice cushioning on the headband, nice cushioning on the side, good isolation here. I can immediately tell the difference from talk through versus noise cancellation. So I double tap over here, talk through, activate. I can hear my own voice now. I can hear what Will's saying. I could go up, I could order the Frappuccino. I got the headphones on. They still assume I'm relatively antisocial so we don't have to get into a 10 minute conversation about, you know, it, it's sure cold out there, you know? I mean, we could do that too. The niceties, you gotta do it every so often. All right, then you just tap back, turns it off, starts playing the music and so on. All right, now, of course, you still need to listen to them. They've got an app now, CapTune, so you can tweak these things to your liking. You have your noise guard selection right here, which is set to 50 at the moment, but I can toggle that back and go down to 13. I can go all the way up to 100, right? I can do it with this switch, or I could do it with the hardware switch. I could turn it off completely. That's one of the things that always killed me with noise cancellation headphones, is what if I'm at home and it's quiet? First of all, why am I using all this extra battery? And then second of all, why am I in the fishbowl right now? And this is important too, just being able to see the battery life remaining, but it doesn't end there. You can use this as your music player as well. Select from a number of different sources. There's also an EQ built in with a bunch of different settings, hip hop to rock to flat. You could do a custom EQ for these things as well. So the FX are on top of the EQ. That's what that FX button is for on here. You can go from club to movie to speech 
to director. So this is really important. You want to get the best out of a movie. You want to get the best out of your music, right? You probably want some more low end, a little more thump on the music side, but then you go to the movie. You want a little bit more speech. You want it to be intelligible. You got the options built in. All right, it's time to listen to some music here. I'm going to throw a couple of different genres at these babies right now. We'll start with some hip hop and the club FX setting. Now you have the volume settings on a phone, but don't forget you can control from here. Hi there, I'd like to uh, order a Frappuccino Macchiato. Bye. If you listen to hip hop, you're not gonna be disappointed here, all right? Sealed back, low end, especially with the hip hop EQ setting and the club setting on the FX, it's what you want. Let me go for another genre. I mean, that's it. Uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna sit here, you're gonna watch me listen. You're gonna be happy you got these. You're gonna be like, finally, I knew what to get because Lou tried all the headphones and then he landed on those ones. I mean, you talk about, you think about the different features that I showed you here. You add the Sennheiser sound to that package that's that well thought out. I don't even notice it on my head. You could catch me like Rip Van Winkle on the couch with the gray beard. It could be years later. Don't even look around. It's simple. Just get these. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video we are going to enjoy another fighting game which Magnus Carlsen played at 2019 World Rapid Championship. This is a round 8 game played against Czech chess grandmaster Viktor Lajnika. While many tournament leaders ended up their games in a draw very quickly, Carlsen kept on fighting and squeezing maximum of the position. But before starting our game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. So in this game, Carson was playing with the white pieces and he opened up with d4. Lachnika responded with d5, knight f3, knight f6 and we have bishop f4. Carson goes for his favorite London system, bishop f5, e3, e6, we have a symmetrical setup, knight b, d2, bishop e7, knight e5, Already g4 can be a threat, that's why black played h5, an ambitious try of course, acting against white's g4, another alternative is h6, but in our game we have an active and an aggressive response, h5, bishop d3, we have the exchange of light squared bishops on d3, knight b d7, queen e2, white is preparing castling queenside, knight e4, and now black wants to play g5, rising white's dark squared bishop. That's why Carlsen opened up an escaping square for his bishop. h3, knight takes d2, queen takes d2, bishop d6, after which the dark squared bishops are also gone and Carlsen castled queenside. So the position got simplified very quickly, exchanges followed one after another, h4, king b1. Of course, all in all, we have an equal position, but the fight goes on. Knight f6, f3, preventing any knight e4 jumps. Queen b6, rook e1. White is preparing f4 advancement, and Lajnika also castled queenside. c3, king b8, and e4 is on the board. So, still at this point, all the pawns are on the board, right? Interesting. Queen c7. Queen g5, we have a nice attacking square for white queen, rook c1, at some point now white will try to bring into life c4 idea, but still it's too early, and rook h5, of course Lachnika is not allowing this queen to stay actively on g5 for a long time, queen e3, e5, d takes e5, d takes e5, and there it goes, c4 is on the board, and d4 by Lachnika. Well, another alternative is d takes e4 and then rook d8 followed by rook d4. But in our game we have d4. Blick is getting a protected passed pawn on d4, but is allowing white to get a pawn majority on the queen side, on which Carlsen will successfully rely on later. Maybe that d takes e4 was better, but we have d4, which is successfully blocked by the knight on d3. The best blockading piece is the knight, right? Knight d7, 
c5, there it goes, Carlsen is starting an advancement on the queen's side, rook h6, and this time we have b4. Uh, yes, Carlsen is demonstrating fighting chess, but he is not eager of drawing the game very quickly. Queen b2, queen b5, not the best continuation. Stopping white pawns with e6 is better, but in our game we have queen b5, and actually we can consider this as the first mistake in this game. Queen b3, rook a6, knight b2, oh, this knight is coming to support the advance of the a-pawn, rook f6, and there it goes, a4 is on the board, queen c6, this time we have b5, there is no way to stop these aggressive monsters. Queen e6, queen b4, and rook c8, which is losing. Well, in here it was very important to play a5, but I guess this is a difficult move to find. If queen takes a5, then knight takes c5. The knight is untouchable because of this b6, but I guess this was too hard to find for Lajnika, and instead he played rook c8, which is creating absolutely no problems for white, and c, c pawn is unstoppable, there it goes, c6 is on the board, knight b6, this time we have a5, knight goes on a8, a miserable square for the knight, and c takes b7, king takes b7, in here we have the exchange of rooks on c8, and white rook is gaining the total control over the c file, knight d3, Knight c5 can be a threat, I don't know, the e5 is hanging, knight c7 by Lajnika, and this time we have knight c5 check, of course, Carlsen is not a pawn grabber, why on earth should he win a pawn in this position? He goes for a direct attack, you know how it goes, knight e5, knight c5 check, sorry, king a8, and b6. Just no way to stop white's aggression. A takes b6, a takes b6, knight a6, and b7 check. Well, knight a6 is actually winning on the spot. If rook takes b6, then rook c8 check will follow. Yeah, it's or. But in our game we have b7 check. King a7, then knight takes a6, which is a huge blunder by Carlsen. Instead, it was better to make a move like queen a4. Yeah, and if you announce a check from b6, then simply king c2. And the problem with this knight takes a6 is that black can play rook b6, something which strangely black didn't make. And all started from that b7 check, you know, it was better simply to win the free knight on a6. And then we have this mistake, but black recaptured and resigned after white's next move. Now look, as I've already mentioned, in here rook b6 is allowing black to fight back, and that single move simply spoils the whole game. And the thing is that already this b8 queen is not working because of this queen takes b8, unlike the previous line, and now you should play rook c8, after which the following line can arise, king takes a6, b8 knight check, king b7, rook takes d8, rook takes b4 check, king c2, rook c4 check, and black is getting nice chances for fighting for a draw, but in our game we have rook takes a6, and after rook c8 we have a resignation, yeah, already rook b6 can be met with b8 queen. And checkmate will follow very quickly. Yeah, in the end, strangely, Lajnika didn't use his chance to fight back, and resignation followed after Carlsen's next move. It's interesting, right? You can play the whole game brilliantly, but then suddenly one single mistake can spoil the whole game. But anyways, we have a victory by Magnus Carlsen, and I hope that you enjoyed this game greatly. Carlsen's pawn push on the queen side I find very entertaining and instructive, why not? In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. 
Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today I've got something that I found very interesting from the moment I heard about it, heard about it, no pun intended. I've got a bunch of headphones on the table here but really the focus is in the center of the table. These here are called B-Tunes and they're from a company called Voxawa. I hope I'm saying that correctly. These little contraptions here will turn any set of headphones, your favorite set of headphones, into wireless ones using high quality Bluetooth 4.0. Now, obviously you're gonna need to use a pair of headphones that has a detachable cable because this here will connect to the opening where that cable would normally attach. Now they make devices for various popular brands, um, you know, Bose headphones, for example, but they also make a universal unit. The idea of being able to take a headphone that, that is not wireless and make it wireless to me is like the perfect kind of scenario because then you're not stuck to selecting only headphones that come in a wireless variant from the manufacturer. Here I've got a pair of JBLs, some Shure SRH440s, uh, some Sennheiser HD8 DJs, and a pair of Alpine headphones that I featured a little while back on the channel. These are all wired headphones. We're about to discover this entire process together. So flipping the box over, the B-Tunes from Voxawa. Voxawa, Voxowa, Voxwa. Designed in California, but of course assembled in China. Most importantly, made for you. Bluetooth 4.0, so power saving features there. NFC touch to pair. I love this in my wireless headphones. It'll work up to 10 meters. Battery is good for 300 hours of standby and 10 hours of listening at moderate volume. There you have it. Now chances are, you've already got a set of headphones. You might even be listening to this video on those headphones. So here's the device. You are also adding a microphone here as well. A pretty sleek little unit there. A micro USB cable to charge it up. So that's how you're gonna charge it up. And then you've also got a power switch in that location there. Paperwork, just a little bit. Charging, charging, finish, pairing mode, blah, 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 low battery. A little bit of warranty and we are good to go. The convenience of Bluetooth is amazing. And with 4.0 and these new codecs, the sound is actually pretty good. So I'm hoping that this little guy here can compete with some of my wireless favorites. And then I can just carry this around. Okay, I see it flashing now. So let me pull out my phone, hold it up. Come on, NFC. NFC, where art thou? Do I have NFC turn on? I do. You're gonna need to be a little bit more precise in this case here. Come on, little guy. Is it user manual time? Did I just move the table? NFC, please. Oh, nailed it. Moved it up a bit. It has to be pretty precise. Kind of wish it was a little bit easier. Which headphones? Let's start with these. The uh, Sennheiser HD8 DJ. Again, this is, you know, it's kind of a universal thing, but it's going to depend on your headphones. Let's see what's up. Oh, there we go. Little adjustment. I'm now in both ear cups. Am I talking loud? I'm a little loud. Okay. I feel like I should, should be able to go a little bit louder. Let me try on these guys here. That's actually, that's a much better fit. Look at that. This, I mean, this one fits great. Ooh, it sounds better too. I mean, we're wireless right now, folks. Look, I don't see any wires. Jack, see any wires? One thing I wanna mention, volume. I feel like I could use a little bit more. Now this, again, is gonna depend on your headphones and how much power is necessary to drive those um, transducers. Did you know that's what, yeah. We're gonna move to these JBLs over here. Okay, now that's a little bit louder on these guys. Ooh, now these guys, okay, these guys feature a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you would need an adapter in this case, because this is a, a 2.5 millimeter. There you have it. I don't know, for me, like this fit here on the Shures, that almost looks like it was meant to be. Kind of. To be honest, for most people, I think that's gonna be suitable volume. I wish it was a little bit louder but I think that might be me more than the actual device. I think it's kind of cool. 
wireless headphones that didn't come from the factory wireless, you made them wireless. To be completely honest, I think I'm into it. Voxowa, B-Tunes. Check it out, I guess. I'll drop a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your viewership. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Take a deep breath. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Later, guys. Hello, chess lovers. Soren here, and in this video, I would like to share with you a quick victorious game which English chess grandmaster Nigel Short played against Sargon Chess Software. The game was played in 1980 in Holenstedt. Though I have to tell you that still, at the time of this game, Nigel Short was not a grandmaster. He would earn his grandmaster title only four years later in 1984. In Wikipedia you can find an interesting article about Sargon and a fact which caught my eye is this. It turns out that Mikhail Botvinnik has also played against Sargon. The famous three-time world chess champion Mikhail Botvinnik played again with Sargon in 1983 at Hamburg. He did not play his best moves but only tested the program's capabilities. Botvinnik himself was also involved in chess program development. If you are interested in this game, probably we should cover this as well. But now back to our chessboard. And without further ado, let's get started with this game and see how Nigel Short punished his opponent. I have to tell you that Nigel Short was playing blindfold and he opened up with e4. Sargon played e6. The computer goes for French defense, d4, d5, e5, we have the advanced variation, and knight c6. Well, this is a very rare move, and honestly, with this move, black can face serious problems. In here, as you know, the main move is c5, with which black is challenging white center and is building up a nice attack from the queen side. But in our game, we have knight c6, which is hindering the advancement of the c pawn and is creating too many problems for black because with cramped position black is not managing to find fitting squares for his pieces. Here we have queen g4 which is making the development of the dark squared bishop difficult. f5, queen f4, bishop b4 check, c3, bishop f8. Well, as for me, I could understand knight c6 or f5, but this bishop b4 check followed by bishop f8 is really a terrible idea, guys. Here we have h4, knight h6, knight h3, queen e7, queen g3, knight f7, knight f4, bishop d7, knight h5, white knight is coming after the pawn on g7, and knight f8. Well, in here, it was high time to castle queenside. At this point you can't go for knight takes g7 because black has this knight takes e5 move. But in our game after knight h5 we have another terrible move by Sargon, knight fd8. Here comes bishop e2, rook b8. Well guys this is crazy you know. I'm sure that if it weren't French defense that Nigel Short could quickly announce a checkmate. As you know French defense is known for its solidity and Black is just managing to survive by relying on that fact. b5, rook b8, b5, this is insane, guys. Knight f3, queen f7, knight g5, queen e7, and knight takes h7. Well, I'm sure that if it weren't a blindfold game, Nigel Short would have gone for knight f6 check. Of course, this is a powerful move with which white is freeing the h5 square for his bishop. If g takes f6, then bishop h5 check is coming. And it's over, guys. This is a total destruction. But in our game after queen e7, we have knight takes h7. White is removing this pawn, which was covering the g6 square. Knight is threatening a move like queen g6 check. Well, black could resign even long time ago, but Sargon keeps on making moves. Bishop c8, knight f6 check. White cavalry is creating too many problems for black king, right? g takes f6, knight takes f6 check. King f7, well, this is a move which is tapping into a checkmate in two. By going for queen takes f6, black could prolong his resistance and avoid an imminent checkmate, but Sargon was too weak, played king f7, and Nigel Short went for the second minor piece sacrifice. 
Bishop h5 check. The idea is to lure away black rook which is covering the g8 square and after rook takes h5 we have queen g8 checkmate. In the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, in the end here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well, I will see you in my next video, take care. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very impressive chess miniature which was played by Estonian chess player Paul Keres against Verbach. The game was played in 1933 and this was a correspondence game. At the time of this game Paul Keres was around 17 years old and I have to tell you that while still studying at high school Keres was playing correspondence games extensively. At one stage he had 150 correspondence games going simultaneously and it is estimated that uh, at that time he played around 500 correspondence games. But before starting our game make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. So in this game Keres had white pieces and he opened up with d4. Verbach responded with d5 and e4 we have the aggressive black march d mark gambit. As you know after e4 the main line goes like this black can accept the gambit hit pawn and then after knight c3 knight f6 this time white is playing f3 but probably this were uncharted territories for black and after e4 black decided to transpose to french defense and played e6. Bishop e3 Keres is choosing the Alapin Gambit. As you know, in here the most popular moves are knight c3, knight d2, or e takes d5, but in our game we have bishop e3. Together with Schlechter variation, these lines are considered to be slightly offbeat and can be rarely seen. Here we have bishop e3, so Keres insists on sacrificing his central pawn, which finally black accepted, and knight d2. With this move white is coming after the pawn on e4 and is maintaining the possibility of playing c3 in case you try to pin the knight. f5. Black decided to stick to the one pawn but this is weakening black's kingside. Instead it was better to play knight f6. This is a more solid continuation but in our game we have f5 and f3. So Keras is sacrificing a pawn but in return is managing to get lead in development and also is leaving black with a weakened pawn structure. Bishop d3, c5, white castled kingside, although Keras could even capture on c5. And in our game we have castling kingside, c takes d4, knight takes d4 and f4, which is a mistake. Well, it was better to proceed with a development, but f4 is on the board. Of course, you can't capture on f4, you will lose your knight. But Keres decided to capture on f4 with the rook allowing e5. e5 is on the board but it turns out that the one who will now suffer heavy losses is black. Here we have bishop b5 check by Keres, although I have to tell you that it's strange that during a correspondence game Keres missed rook takes f6. With this move he is removing the defender and then is starting to harass black king. And then bishop c4 can follow queen f3, he takes d4, bishop takes d4 with a decisive attack. Or after rook takes f6, if queen takes f6 then this time knight d4 will follow and again black is facing serious problems. Where are you going to put your queen? If queen b6 then queen h5 check. Yes, all this looks very unpleasant for black. But let's go back to our main game. So after e5 we have bishop b5 check and king f7. Well, bishop d7 is better, although even in this case black has little chances of saving the position. In here finally white can go for an exchange sacrifice and then can announce a check from h5. Yeah, white is doing great and Black is in trouble, despite the fact that white is exchanged down, but white has a ferocious attack. In our game after bishop b5 check we have king f7 and queen h5 check. 
Finally, Queen h5 is on the board, although we see this without an exchange sacrifice relying on the pin g6, bishop c4 check, king g7. This allows white to checkmate black king e3 in the most spectacular fashion, although even if king e8, then this won't help black. White can capture on f6. Well, if you go for the exchange of queens, then you can't save this position. White has an extra piece, or if a move like queen takes e3, then simply king h1 and yeah, just no way out. This black king stuck in the center of the board can become an easy target. But let's go back to our main game. So after bishop c4 check, where is that bishop c4? Yes. We have king g7, and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find checkmate in 3. Ready? In here, Paul Keres announced the check from h6 and sacrificed his queen. Did you find this spectacular move? King takes h6 by Verbach, and rook h4, double check, and after king g7, we have a magnificent bonus mate on the board. Look at this beauty guys a very unique final combination and a brutal checkmate which i hope that you enjoyed greatly in the end a thematic chess puzzle where the task is to find mate in two and i'm sure that in a blink of a second you found the solution thanks for watching here are more suggestions for you feel free to check them out as well i will see you in my next video take care Pop goes the weasel. What does that mean? What's going on here? Look at that fancy packaging. If that doesn't pique your interest, I don't know what would. Eco-friendly types of packs. Kind of fitting the shape of it, the futuristic vibe, because inside is a highly requested piece of tech started out on Kickstarter. You've seen in-ear headphones, you've seen over-ear headphones, and this is a combination of both. Some level of intelligence here, able to tune sound specifically for your anatomical makeup, that your unique eardrums function. That sounds incredibly sophisticated, and my understanding is that it is. If this is the future right here, I need to know about it, and so do you. They're called Neura, the actual headphones are called Neurophone, Type-C cable, Lightning cable, Micro USB, and also an analog cable. Some people's reactions to these things were banana. Wow, what? We're gonna find out if the mind is blown. Ooh, the secret to perfect sound is you. How cryptic is that, Jack? These are not inexpensive. They're around 400 bucks. Ooh, that's a key to my heart right there. Some sort of magnetic enclosure for your Uncle Lou there. Ooh, very high caliber experience. The smell is fresh as well. Oh man, that's what the inside of the ear cup looks like. Excuse me, that is so bizarre. That is gonna go right into your ear canal, responsible for highs and mids, and then the base is gonna be sort of in the surrounding region. I've never seen a headphone like this. A lot of protective plastic on here. Peel that off, peel that off. Okay, the ear cup itself is adjustable right on the headband. Your connection point is right here. What you'll see is it's got a proprietary connector on the other end. Downside, if you have an issue with this cable or you forget to bring it with you, not easily replaceable. Willie do update here to tell us that these are the first headphones, at least the first we've seen that actually charges from your smartphone. Although there's no indication to me that that's happening right now. Maybe we have to install the app first. Do you own Neurophones yet? Yes. Find a quiet place for just a moment and we'll guide you through getting started. Okay. Ensure the charging port is on your right. Okay. Do the band adjustment, all right, so here we go. Oh, that feels very unique. Oh, it woke up right away. She, okay, she just said, hello, I'm Neurophones. You will see me in the Bluetooth settings right now. This is what the app looks like, pretty basic. And by default, they're set to some kind of generic mode. The real key thing here is the personalization of the sound signature. So what you need to do here is set up a profile. I'm ready, oh wow. Looks like your nerve runs aren't creating a good seal. As I adjust the headphone, it's becoming more black. 
I think I got it now. Man, this is so futuristic. Whoa. So I feel the need to explain right now. I heard a, a series of beeps and bloops and it was kind of analyzing the way I hear things. It was able to create this personalized setting now. And what it's doing now is playing a, a sample song in generic mode and it told me to switch over to personalized. So this should be my reaction here. Wait, let me turn it up first. Here we go, personalized. The personalized has way more bass. Use the outer ear drivers to create the immersive feeling of a live performance. You have some different settings here from gentle up to front row. Let me turn this up again. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, when I tap the left ear cup, it turns off the personalization regardless of my settings. Gentle, it sounds sort of like normal headphones, all right? You get up to that front row setting. Oh man, it lets you know. Some of the most bass I've ever heard on headphones in the front row setting. This is a visual representation of my personal setting now. The rumble of the bass is serious, man. It's the most bass I've ever heard, period. Not even close, no close second. It is so much bass. If you're a bass head at all, I mean, you have to try this. This is bananas. This is like, this is like a whole new device. You kind of forget that it's headphones that are producing it. I don't know how long you can listen like that. It's super aggressive. It's pushing your boundaries. I've heard some of these songs a million times. Inside of here, I'm getting motivated. You know, you see the basketball players, they arrive to the arena, always with some headphones on. They need to get their hands on these because they think they're getting pumped up, but my goodness. You're not gonna believe me till you try it. I mean, that's the thing. You're gonna have to take my word for it. And of course, the millions of headphones that I've tested. These are something different, I promise you. Have you been snacking again? Jack. The Apple AirPods, all the rage. This little dental floss looking thing. This particular product isn't perfect for everyone. Look at that little guy there. It's not the greatest headphone. Now for some people this fits really well. Other people it's fallen out of their ears. It's, it's a different kind of look but they work seamlessly with your iPhone and for that matter, your Android phone and the case charges the earbuds themselves. But that didn't stop this company Crazy Baby from taking a crack at the fully wireless earbud and maybe dethroning the AirPod. So they have something here called Air. It does come in two colors, but I can tell immediately that you have a larger earbud and it sits deeper in the ear. It's an in-ear style, not just sort of on the outside. 15 plus hours, the latest Bluetooth 4.2. Apparently these are the only ones, the only earbuds that have a carbon nanotube membrane. They're sweat proof, so the fitness people are gonna be happy. And it looks to me like they charge up over USB type C. Now these things raised a ton of money on crowdfunding. Like I, I think it was 2.4, 2.7 million dollars. At least in this case, this company Crazy Baby, they do have other products. And in fact, we made a video previously on this levitating speaker thing that they made, which is which was actually pretty nice. So oh. can they execute? It, it's oh, certainly yeah. a, a nice sign. Woo. Oh, I gotta move this way. Look at that. Ooh. That's a nice little capsule. I would still consider it to be quite portable. Ooh, 
That's where the earbuds live. It looks like it's illuminated in red, so that might light up red. Contact points there for charging. The in-ear style earbud sits deeper inside your ear. It's gonna be more secure for fitness, running, things like this. A better seal inside the ear canal. It's very comparable. It almost looks more like a normal headphone. It's just sliding in there. You hardly even notice it. Why does the charging tube have to be so huge then? Look at that, that's nice. Small, medium, large. Whoa. So this is a cover that appears to go around the entire earbud. I think this is kind of like a hygiene thing here. If you know you're gonna be sweating it up. What was that guy, Richard Simmons? Get that body going. Sweating to the 80s or 90s or... Warm that body up and give me some loving. Lots of different ear tips. They have included a cable, no need to be worried there. A nice little short one, USB type C. That's a power button. These are power buttons. I'm hoping that they go straight into pairing mode. There it is, Air by Crazy Baby. We are paired up. So that's it, that's all it takes. All right, how's that looking, Jack? Do we have a nice fit there? That's a slightly nicer look than the AirPod. It looks more like a traditional earbud just without the wires. These things have created a significant seal. My voice is like very muffled when I'm hearing. Let's try them out. Oh. They feel very secure. I'm gonna walk away from the phone a little bit, just the range. By the time I got, oh, I don't know, 30 feet away, every so often the one earbud would cut out. It is so strange talking when you hear, when you have the muffled version. So they sound pretty good. Every so often I gotta just blast. I gotta get motivated. And they didn't really go there to the full extent that I'm looking for. We did a video recently on something called the IQ Buds. These things are for real, Tom. <laughs> okay. I can't hear anything he's saying now. Watch me, I'm gonna go back to home. Yo. Oh! I'm alive again! Kind of looked a lot like this. You could mix the audio of your surroundings with the audio that you were listening to through the microphone on the unit. There's really nothing else that I've tried like those, and they do a lot of what these do, and then a bunch more. These might be the most comfortable of any truly wireless earbud that I've used. It does not feel like they're gonna fall out at all, and I feel very little tension. Like, I'm shaking my head. Like, it doesn't, it's in there. The AirPod is a one-size-fits-all scenario. For a lot of people, these are just gonna fall out of their ears, right? For me, they're not bad. When you go to an interchangeable system like this one with all these various little ear tips in one, now you get a much better fit, which results in much better sound. Shout out to Mob Deep, Prodigy, you know, passed away recently. I mean, I grew up listening to that stuff, so rest in peace. I just wanna put that out there. They sound good, man. Like, they do. They actually do sound good. Man, where we started from with the truly wireless earbud, the nightmares that I've been through here on this channel, things have gotten a lot better. But for me, and for my money, probably one of the coolest truly wireless experiences that I've had is those IQ Buds that I mentioned. Go watch that video. It's called, These Earbuds Give You Superpowers Full yes! of Oohs and Ahs. Yes! This episode of Unbox Therapy is brought to you by the wonderful people at Oreo and specifically their new king size milk Oreo chocolate candy bar as well as the king size classic Oreo double stuff might I add which happens to be Jack's favorite he can't stop snacking I'm trying to get him to do some work around here seeing Oreo crumbs all over the place. So you can pick both of these up at your local convenience store and Oreo's also doing a giveaway. You can win your very own Oreo Wonder Vault full of delicious Oreo products or $1,000. The details are down in the description. Go click the link. Get yourself some Oreo so you can snack like Jack. There's a thing that we do here. I enjoy, I think you enjoy. It's called Does It suck. But you know what doesn't suck? Today's sponsor of this episode, it's called LastPass. Look at this, check this out, all right? This is a secure place to keep your password so you don't use 
the exact same password on all those different sites across the internet. So then one becomes compromised and then all of a sudden somebody's into all your accounts. LastPass is one password to remember. Check it out. Simplify your life. Let LastPass remember and fill passwords for you into websites and apps. It's actually free as well. You can test this thing out for free. They do have a paid version with some extra features. That's like a dollar. Either way, this is one repository for all your passwords. It will remember them. It works in your browser or on mobile. Whatever your password, ABC, one, two, three, it's not cutting it. Nobody's getting into your stuff. LastPass, check them out. Link down in the description. You could try it right now for free. The concept is that I take an item, a product, something that piques my interest, usually on Amazon, and I take the risk. I buy it so you don't have to. But then again, the thing might be good, in which case I've just uncovered some treasure of the internet. The one on the left, Aki Wireless Arcs Secure Fit Earbuds. Wireless Bluetooth earbuds that are $13. But then I got this other set on the right from a company called Lan by Lan. These have even better reviews than the Wireless Arcs, and these are $9.99 for only $9.99. All right, so first, unboxing experience here, very important. They look pretty nice, actually, around the ear, sort of, so that the wire goes behind your head. It has an inline remote, also volume up, down, microphone, some extra ear tips so you get the right size, a little one of those guys, the old wah, 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 wah. All right. Pretty nice. How does the land by land compare? So, micro USB as well, flat micro USB cable. A little more colorful. These do come in a couple different colors. It has play pause right on the earbud and volume right on the earbud as well. No need for this extra piece here. Also, the ear tips on these ones have this little hook on the inside. Also, extra sizes included. Let's try the Aki ones. Around the back of the head, around the ear, like this. It's actually quite a secure fit. You're jogging, you're, at, you're, you're lifting weights, you're, this is, yeah, it's pretty secure. Let's boot these things up. Okay, so I just got a tone in my ear. Boo-doom. Let us go to some music now. Wow. Okay, what a time to be alive. That's the way I feel right now. What a time to be alive. $12.99. I got no cords. I got Bluetooth. I got stereo. Okay, let me try these. Let me, I gotta try these ones now. The microphone on this one is right in this location. I don't know if Jack can pick up. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it goes straight into pairing mode. Connected. We got a voice on this one, not just beeps. Go straight into your ears. They don't hook around the outside, as you can see, but they do have that internal, the little rubber piece. So it has a secondary grip on the inside. Oh, it's also, it's a nice fit though, too. Maybe a little less isolating, I'd say. What about the sound? Ooh. Wow, okay, these ones are way louder. I might just wear them under the chin. No, I guess you're not supposed to. I mean, this is, look at that look. No one wants, who wants that look right there? On the outside here, play pause. You know exactly where it is, right? Like with this one, it might take you a second to hit, to find the pause button on this one. So for sound, for sure, I'm giving it to these ones. I mean, they're louder, there's more bass. Maybe they're like a little less balanced, a bit more dynamically tuned than those ones do. I think the vast majority of people are gonna say, hey man, those sound better than those, which is kind of surprising. It's not what I expect. These are $10. They're both amazing though. I think you get either one of these, you're gonna be like over the moon at that $12 or $10 purchase. That's the truth. If fit and security is number one, I'd probably go this way. If sound quality and volume is number one, I'd probably go this way or just get them both. I mean, you can afford to lose one of them at this price. It's insane. $10, $12.99. We are living in the future, my friends. Technology is a beautiful thing. They do not suck. All right. I've tested earbuds that are more than $1,000 on this channel. Now, these do not sound that good, but my goodness, for $10 or $12, let me tell you something. What a time to be alive. Tom, you might have to try these out, bud. So here's a new thing. This is a new take. It's a new development. 
They're called IQ Buds. Oh great, another pair of fully wireless earbuds. Big deal, but no, 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 no. What these things here do is allow you to mix your outside noise with your media noise. Look at this little booklet goes with life changing. Plus this guy's beard is not bad. He's kind of got my whole thing going on there. Advanced speech amplification, noise control, augmented hearing. It's like you're at the gym. You don't care about the noise around you, your surroundings, but then you're dining out. You're enhancing a conversation. This happened to us the other night. We're at that bar over there. The music. But then you're in the office. You want a little bit of both. You got the podcast or the music on. Then your colleague over here. That's a colleague, he wants to talk to you, and you can't hear anything because you're shut off from the world. It's an easy to use app on both iPhone and Android. 16 hours of Bluetooth streaming battery life. All right, so we have a cool little carrying case here. A bunch of different tips, ear tips, so you get the right fit. Each of these has these contact points that'll match up with... The microphone is on already, listen to this. That's crazy. It's like your very first hearing aid. We'll go with round large to start. If you're Jack, you're out of luck. What would you need? Quadruple XL for those babies over there? Okay, here we go. We're in there. Press and hold for five seconds until you hear pairing, okay? Oh, I got the pairing. There we go, IQ buds. Whoa, I'm in the restaurant setting right now. Everything is so clear and amplified. Tom, say something. Oh. You're amplified right now. I can hear the room noise too. I toggle this, now I'm at Starbucks, I'm ordering, I hear everything. Tom, get over here. Just speak to me a little bit. Can't you hear me without those though? No. Speak to me. Tom! That's creepy. <laughs> you are so clear right now. Take take them off and nope. see you. You're reading at the table, let's say, or you're okay. working on your laptop okay. and you have those in. Yeah. Isn't that kind of intrusive? Yeah, so you turn, you toggle it. So you mix your surroundings with the music you're listening to. Well, if someone's about to hit you with their car, they're honking, and you're lost in your podcast while you're biking. Okay, I get that. I don't get it at restaurants. I don't get it in like- no, no, At restaurants, it's just a hearing aid. I'm enjoying this conversation with these on more than if it was just natural. Mm. I don't think I've ever shared this many words with you before. No. Okay, I'm gonna switch to driving. Here we go. Oh, same thing. Way different. Wow. I kind of like driving. Okay, I'm gonna switch to home. Ooh. You're doing chores around the house. You're listening to your music. The baby's in the crib. Screaming away! What if you're waiting for your pizza to be delivered, but you want to get lost in your tunes? You're not gonna hear that doorbell. No, I, I... Look at what I'm doing right now, Tom! I'm hitting you! With the science! You presented it originally as a Starbucks example. I think dude, that's a dude, place. look, they, they put it in their pamphlet, man. Yeah, that's stupid. The examples you're coming up with are good, though. I agree with those. I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm the guy. You could set up your favorite locations. There's workout, street, office, plain music. Office is good. Office is good. That's really good. If you're in classroom, oh. high school. Oh. You're in high school. You don't want to pay attention to all that. You don't want that. What I'm gonna do, start a little bit of music and see how this goes, if I can still maintain. Okay. The most amazing part here is I can hear my own voice. Now if I go to music, it's gonna completely close off. Just straight up music. Check, check, one, two. Oh my, oh my. It's terrible. Now my voice is muffled. It's like normal headphones now. And now I realize what the magic is. These things are for real. These things are for real, Tom. Okay. I can't hear anything he's saying now. Watch me, I'm gonna go back to home. Yo. Oh! I'm alive again! It's the best of both. It's isolation when you want it. It's socialization when you need it. You can go a step further where you can actually mix it yourself. Now it's gross again. And then I come back up and there's maximum amplification. Oh my, god. oh my god. Wow. You wanna try them out? Sure. Restaurant, let's say, okay? Oh wow. Yes! That's weird. Yes! Oh man. So, that's right. That's magical, man. That's weird. So now, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna take you just to music. Now say something. Oh man. Yeah, it sucks! 
It's terrible without it. It's terrible. You're sitting at home. It's like late or something, right? And everyone else is asleep. And you have your headphones on, but you're isolated. And, and you feel like you heard something. And you're like, you have that moment of like, somebody standing behind. Or you get startled because someone actually is. Yeah. Wow. They're amazing. Crazy. They're amazing. These are so cool. This is so cool. These are cool. It's cool. Tom never says that. Tom never says that. IQ buds. Nothing ever blows my mind. And certainly Tom never. Keep in mind, they sound good as headphones too. But this is the feature it's all about. This is the dream come true. This is a moment right now. It's a moment in human history. I mean, they, they walked on the moon and then this happened. Christopher Columbus, now this. In this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, guess I'm unboxing. Woo! What am I doing here? Oh my god. You want me to start unboxing? Or? This is horrible. This is just horrible. Oh man, I just don't like talking to a camera. I don't want whiskey. So apparently I'm the new unlock those. <laughs> Can I help you? Sure, yeah. Dude. Be because uh, you're looking a little too comfy there. Jack, did you let him? Did you put him in here? You thought he had what it takes to do all this? Well, you can at least tell him what we're doing today, Tom. Oh. <laughs> we just went through this. <laughs> the reason Tom is here today is not to host the show. I know many of you were very afraid there for a moment. I was too. Because I saw him sitting over here with the lights on and the crickets were chirping, you know. The... A little while back we did a video, $8 headphones versus $80 Beats. Now those $8 headphones, I don't know what happened to them. They probably disintegrated or something. You could hear something coming through them, but you would never tell anybody about your $8 headphone experience. But a lot of people on that video said, hey man, that's not fair. Like $8 versus 80, of course the beats are gonna sound better. Oh. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Shortly after that video went up, I got some feedback. And someone hit me up on Twitter and specifically said, hey Lou, I just got these headphones shortly after having Beats and I think these $20 headphones off Amazon can beat the Beats. See what I did there with the... Mm -hmm. Beat the Beats! So I ordered these up right away. They're called Sound Intone CX05. They still don't know why you're sitting here though. No. We're not here to take part. We're here to take part. Woo-wee! We're not here just to take part, we're here to take over! Kaboom! Anyway, Tom's here because he took part in that original video and he was kind of giving you the analysis of like an everyday kind of person. Not, not somebody like me who's evaluating products a couple thousand videos deep, but a guy who just usually sits on the couch. <laughs> Is this the $20 Beats headphone killer? Is this the end of the Beats EP? Will they RIP? Is Tom gonna lay the Beats to rest? Let's give him a shot. Okay. Look around the box, what do we have? 40 millimeter drivers, I think those are exactly the same. Very nice. These are 20 bucks for the record. Canvas kind of headband. The hinge is metal that folds. Removable 3.5 millimeter cable. No removable cable. So far, I'm, I'm feeling kind of good here. Braided cable. I mean, if I had to guess, I, I would guess these are 80 and those are 20. Wow. These are nice. These are really nice. Shots fired. I just want to see if I put these on, if they feel essentially similar. Ooh, they do actually feel, they have a really similar ear cup. With the blindfold, I'm not sure you're gonna know the difference. Yeah, yeah, keep it fair. It was bright lights, by the way. Gary Clark Jr., because that's what we listened to last time. Bright lights, okay, here we go. <laughs> You ready for round two? Mm -hmm. 
He's on some next level right now. You good yet? Let's talk a little bit first about how you would describe the first one versus the second one. They were pretty comparable. Like they were wow. Pretty, yeah, they were pretty equal. So you and would say the sound attributes are, are, are more similar than I, they are different? I felt so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. If I had to guess, I would say beats were first. But again, I don't know. It was so comparable that I could, I could go either way. Did you find the first to be more enjoyable to listen to? Honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to pick. They were both. You're just putting them on an even playing field. Pretty much. From yeah. an enjoyment perspective. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we may have found $20 Beats killers here. Yeah. The Beats were the first ones you heard. My theory here, if I had to come up with one before listening to them myself, is I'm going to guess that these are probably accentuated maybe a little more on the low end than those are. See, it's funny because I felt like on the second pairing wow. that the, the bass drum was was uh, a little heavier was on more those. Clear. Yeah. I think I have to do it myself, right? Yeah. Can I try one more like genre? I'm diving in. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to dive in right now. Little still Dre. Dre sounds better on beats. <laughs> <laughs> I think these have a slightly thicker sound to them. I think they fit a little bit tighter. I find these to be more comfortable. I think unless you're putting these things head to head like this, like A, B testing them, you'd be hard pressed to say, oh, that one sounds way better than the other one. A lot like in the realm of smartphones, headphones on the cheaper side of things have caught up a lot. Like once upon a time, you walk into a Best Buy and get $20 headphones, they're not very good. All of a sudden, a $20 headphone has features, it feels solidly built, this is all metal, and it sounds pretty good. I don't know if these are gonna be Beats killers, but I will say this, I, I don't think you're necessarily gonna get more enjoyment out of these than these. So Tom, in the last video, as I said to you, you got $20 headphones, you have $80 headphones, they're both in the store, you can test out each one, you can save the 60, do whatever it is you want with the 60, you go out on a date, get a steak and stick with these or it's these and it's pizza oh i'm going with these for sure whoa 100 for sure i am falling off my chair over here personally the i couldn't really tell the difference yeah and yeah you could slightly and i don't think that's 60 dollars worth no you're probably right you got no fancy branding though does that bug you tom i actually like that a little bit better you prefer that no yeah. logo but i think i agree with tom 20 dollars beats killers maybe yeah Thank Tom for that. Look at the dead honesty over here. Wait, you can't, you can't buy that. You can trust the guy who's on the couch most of the time. With the potato chips. Carrots and bananas. Yeah, sure, bud. Listen, if those bags of Lay's look like carrots to you, you got a real problem. Today, I'm gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna show you some earbuds that look nothing like anything you've ever seen before. They're from a company called Odyssey. In front of me, I have the iSign 10, and they are planar magnetic earbuds, which as far as I know, this is like a first right here. There's a bigger brother as well. Over in this box, without the retail packaging yet, is the iSign 20. Now these are just a little bit more expensive, 600 bucks. And these ones are 399, 400 I believe. So it's a little step up. Both obviously incredibly expensive. This ain't an AirPod or an EarPod. There's no pod in the name at all. Now obviously that comes at the expense of having a bigger headphone, but if you care about music, you're willing to make that sacrifice. If you really care, if it hits you right in the, right where, right in the loins. The concept here is that by using the lightning port, the brand themselves, Odyssey, can have their DAC in line. You can end up with a far more pleasing sound in some cases than what the traditional 3.5 millimeter connector can provide. Now, both of these come with options, so you can still use an analog connector if you don't have an iPhone. The mini jack is still there. How are you gonna drive a substantial enough signal to take advantage of the headphones? And that's what they're aiming to do. All of a sudden, it's Euphoria, 3000 MW. Fluxar N50 magnets, super efficient for two times the driving power. The lowest distortion of any headphone anywhere. That's that crunchiness, that's that stuff that wasn't meant to be there. Now these are 30 millimeter drivers as well. And the material here on this one is going to cover even more of the diaphragm of the earphone. There are four separate patents inside of this earphone. Apparently they are handcrafted in California, which that can't be said for many products these days. So if that's significant to you, that is another thing to think about. Nice little 
travel case. Ooh, wow, that's the actual earbud. Look at that thing. This certificate guarantees the Odyssey product was thoroughly tested and burned in and a certificate of authenticity. So two separate cables here, one using the lightning connector and has an inline DAC in it, the more traditional mini jack connector, no DAC built in, a number of different ways to fit these things on your ear. Now, obviously, actually, you know, it's not as heavy as I expected it to be. Ear hook type scenarios to get it in there and that's it and that'll fit into your ear and it actually I know it looks big and unusual right now, but it's very secure on there. There's a couple of little pins there to the corresponding earbud. You'll see L and L represented there. There's an app for these. So when using the lightning cable, you can tune your sound. You can see you have a various stage equalizer here. So even if the sound attributes out of the box don't meet your criteria, you go in here and tinker with this thing. I'll start with some mellow jazz. There's a ton of juice right away. I can discern these things are incredibly full. From a clarity perspective, I was getting the, I was getting tingly. I was getting a little tingly there, which is always a good sign. I'm gonna switch to something more electronic here. Oh. The thickness. You wanna talk about a tingle factory? That's where I just was. All right, holy smokes. It really has a vibe and a feel a lot closer to an over-ear headphone. It's the most and cleanest bass I've ever heard on an earbud. The craziest part here is that these are not the most high-end version of this particular design. That's the 20s. Oh my goodness, I think I like them even better. It's like a copper kind of look. Now the question is, should you pony up the extra 200 bucks and go all the way to the 20s because you're already spending 400 on earbuds? We're about to find out. Focus, Lou, focus. These things are making me emotional right now. It's a whole body thing right now. They're a little bit thicker. I wanna jump into the EQ. <laughs> There's a kind of like happiness associated with hearing music in a, in a, in a super crystal clear kind of way. Like when it, it, it almost feels like the veil has been lifted off of it and like it's the way it was intended to be heard. You can kind of go in and create a dynamic environment that's perfect for you. you can make these even more dynamic than they already are even though out of the box, they're gonna give you shivers, all right? You're gonna be chilled out different type of, you'll be sitting there like, I don't know if you're ready for that. 30 millimeter drivers are terminating down to this tiny little ear hole right now, and I'm sucking it all in. Today's a special day. Thank you for being with us. Me, us. So today we got some headphones. Couple of them in front of me here, and I know you've seen hundreds, maybe thousands of videos on different headphones, not just here on the channel, but across YouTube. But usually I'm looking for something unique. These are called the Warehouse Arc. What's different about these is that these have something called wireless audio sharing. Sync up with nearby warehouse headphones and listen together. This is about socialization. This is about uh, being able to share in the same media that your friend happens to be listening to. Well, guess what? If you're at school, you're in the cafeteria or something, Boom, just link from yours to theirs and they can kind of DJ. Let's say, for example, someone has a movie on their laptop on an airplane, you're sitting next to them. This is an elegant way to both be watching the same screen and listening to the same source on your own independent headphones and you're doing so wirelessly. So there are some use cases in which this might be interesting. Customization of the color, so you can actually control the color, touch control, so you can tap the side. And then they claim there's precision tuned audio. Here you can see 40 millimeter drivers. That's that's pretty good. Up to 30 meters of sinking range, up to 15 hours of battery life. You could have like your own silent party. You know, maybe you get the neighbors constantly complaining. I mean, it would be a weird look. All right, it's got me thinking. Let's check these babies out. Ooh. Oh, 
Bit of an unboxing experience here. Look at that presentation. It's an on-ear style, but if you push down into the ear cup, there's like a concave in there. So we'll see how I like that. Generally, I like around the ear style, but this is maybe a hybrid. Here you can see the controls on the side. Beautiful. Shows you how the touch controls work. An auxiliary cable. Is there a mic? Yes, a microphone here and buttons. Oh, sweet. Look at that. Create a station. It's like your own radio station you're broadcasting. What your battery life is in percentage. It'll tell you what's playing if you have a song playing. And this is also where you can broadcast, join stations, and switch the light settings. Wow, so check it out. I'm listening to a podcast right now. The Joe Rogan Experience. You can see the artwork now showed up. Now playing. Volume wise, I've tested a lot of Bluetooth headphones which don't give me the juice I'm looking for. These things are banging. I can move around the color wheel and that's kind of nice. It, it, it moves in real time. And then there's a few different multicolor options also. Get in here, Tom, brother. More Tom, more Tom, more Tom, more Tom. Guys, thumbs up if you can't get enough of Tom. Thumbs down if you're fed up. He's like, to uh, kill somebody. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Okay, so there's Tom's solos, there's my solos. So I click on the broadcast button over here and I can name my radio station. Big Lou's Audio Extravaganza. Is that how you spell extravaganza? Now on Tom's side, he's gonna join the nearest station. Boom, he just joined the extravaganza and I'm broadcasting from my head. I feel like uh, this is the closest I've ever felt to being a radio DJ right now. You're on my watch, brother. Prepare to have your life changed. Who'd it belong to, man? I don't know. Didn't look like mine. DJ Big Lou! Why am I screaming? I mean, are yours as loud as mine? <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting blasted here. <laughs> I'm getting blasted. We're going to switch over to SoundCloud. Did that work? Oh, okay, so I completely changed audio source. I went from Google Play Music into SoundCloud now, and Tom's still in the mix. You want, you want, you want freestyle to this? No. You want freestyle to this? Sure. They already saw me freestyle, so I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. There is nothing that I know. We could rhyme right now. It could be a whole circle of people. He could be involved. Yeah, but I would be the guy listening to me like, that's good. That's great. You know? No, 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 no. I give him a... Is the, that when you're hitting the snare? Wu-Tang Classic. Yeah, the snare. Mine's delayed. They have to be in sync or this is pointless. Imagine we were watching a video. It's delayed. It's delayed. It's a couple of frames delayed. To me, that's totally watchable. Like, the lips are ever so slightly ahead of the words. Music is going to be less of a problem. Yeah, oh yeah. Because if I'm playing a song for you, as long as you don't hear mine, it's as long mine as you're are blasting. Rap battling. Well, why are yours not playing anymore? Why is my phone not working anymore? Listen, they're a little bit finicky on the connectivity between the two. Slight delay and then at times connections on and off. Theoretically, a lot of this stuff could be fixed through software updates, new apps. When it's working, it's kind of a cool concept. That slight little delay, I think some people might have an issue with it, others probably not so much. It's a pretty cool concept. How much do you care? I think it's quite interesting actually. Scale of one to 10, the Tom care factor. An eight. Whoa, all right. Tom surprised me there. He's usually on the lower end of the spectrum, so uh, there you have it. Tom, give Tom your thumb. <laughs> right where it counts. <laughs> yes, I finally got the AirPods. I almost said ear pods. Believe it or not, they arrived a little while ago, but there was a lot of things going on moving studios and then CES, and it's like, I haven't looked at them yet. You guys got a lot of questions about these things. You're like, are they any good? Is our future completely wireless? Are they just ear pods with the cords cut off? I don't know. So that's what we're here for. We're gonna find out, are the AirPods any good or do they suck? Do they suck? Does it suck? Whatever. Apple has essentially taken the EarPod, but now they made it wireless. It's using a, a completely new method of pairing to your device. It's a whole new look right inside your iPhone when connecting to these. Now, they will also work 
with Android devices and other Bluetooth devices, but you won't have all that fancy pairing going on. So here's what the package looks like, and you can see on the back, there's a little case that comes with it, a charging case, looks like some, some dental floss, and that keeps some extra battery in it that charges these things up even when you're away from an outlet. As you know, there's been some criticism with the latest iPhone ditching the traditional headphone jack, but it's pretty obvious that that's a move to push people in the direction of the wireless earphone slash headphone space. You guys remember, Apple also owns Beats Audio. Okay, a little bit of paperwork about the AirPods. Then you had the AirPods themselves. Like I said, I mean, it's almost exactly like a dental floss case. And then underneath there, your charging cable it uses the lightning connector. So probably have an abundance of those already. So those will work. Now, a lot of people kind of have a, a love-hate relationship with their ear pods as it is right now but this is different because now you're buying a peripheral you're spending money extra money on headphones so your expectations are kind of going to be a little bit elevated lightning connector goes in the bottom now this guy on the top flips up yeah there's a little magnet in there the ear pods pull out like that i mean they're not the most attractive things in the world some people said it looks like a toothbrush sticking out of your ear or an earring or something like that let me just see here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a weird look. They are small and very lightweight, so I feel, I feel free. It's not the tightest fit in the game, I will say that. Of course, Apple here with the AirPod, just like the EarPod, has a one size fits all. There's no tips you put on here. They either fit you great or, or they don't. Now, the other thing to remember is these things also have microphones, right? Because you should be able to trigger certain events by speaking directly to them or by talking and taking phone calls. Maybe that has something to do with the design as well, the, the, the shape of the thing. For me, this evaluation right here has more to do with the sound and the fit. And so far, th these are okay in my ears they're comfortable at least. Now, the real thing is this ability to pair with your iPhone in a far simpler fashion than a pair of generic Bluetooth earbuds. Oh wow, okay cool. In my opinion, that's why you're buying these things and not buying these things is for that right there. Smooth as butter, look at this. Open it up, ask you if you wanna connect. Speed, that's the killer app. So look at that, I just press connect. And that's it, the battery life of the AirPods themselves and then also the remaining battery on the case. Now these babies go in and now it's time for the musical evaluation. The real question here for me is are these things an upgrade over the regular AirPods or are they just a wireless version of it? Play some real quick. Okay, listen. I like a lot of volume on my headphones. And one of the things I've been noticing about fully wireless headphones, whether they're Bluetooth or these ones, I'm not getting a ton of volume. Now it's probably better for my hearing in the long run, but I like a, I like a thump to it, you know? What if you are on Android? Then what does the process look like? This button on the back? Yeah, okay, cool. That button, now I see AirPods. I mean, that's pretty easy as well. Now let's try this out. Sound is, is essentially identical. Even on Android, I'd say it's a, it's a little bit easier than some of the competitors in the fully wireless space because some of those were like, turn on the one earbud and then wait 14 seconds, look at the moon and howl and then the other one comes online. You know, it's like, it's a bit of a, truthfully, I'm a little surprised Apple made them compatible. You, you know the way they are with the proprietary stuff. You get the added functionality with their phone, but hey, Android people, you can use them. You probably won't, but you can. Let's give these a shot. Now I wonder if I plug these in, if it's just gonna immediately switch over to them. Now the first thing I'm noticing is the fit is actually not identical. This one does have a little bit more depth to it. Less isolation with these than those right off the bat. Let's see if this just switches over instantly when I play this. It does. Okay, let me just switch back real quick. The sound attributes are very similar and I think I actually got a little bit more volume out of these. So I think these are a purchase of convenience, right? To have the nice little pack that goes with it and to not have the potential pairing woes associated 
with a wireless pair of headphones. The convenience is actually a, a big, huge component here. And then you mix in the fact that you're not tied down strictly to iOS, like you could use these with Android if you really wanted to. From a sound perspective, it's hard to get fired up. You know what I mean? Like I've listened to very expensive headphones, earphones, earbuds, you name it. And you can tell from my reaction normally. When it comes to reactions, you can't fake it. Like you saw me. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't jumping out of my chair. They sound essentially like the things that were already included with your iPhone, except without a cable. Is that cool? Is that good? Or does that suck? It, hard for me to say it sucks and I'll tell you why. Listen up real quick. Progress getting to the next level, pushing people towards whatever that next thing is. It's always a little bit painful. There's always drawbacks along the way, but somebody has to step in and do it. And a lot of people out there are gonna, gonna be saying, but wait, Apple wasn't the first person with fully wild earbuds. It's true, they, they, they weren't. And very rarely are they the first. But the difference is when it gets adopted by Apple, more people get into the game, more people use it. They have crazy distribution, crazy branding. And so people put these things in their pocket and it pushes other manufacturers who might make something more that I would like and you would like to adopt those technologies because the marketplace expands rapidly when Apple does something. Whether you like Apple or not, their influence is vast in the game. I can say the sound, I'm not happy with the sound. The convenience is an A plus though. If you're in the game for sound, I'll show you 300 pairs of headphones. You can stick an amp on it and zone out. You can hit the next dimension. That's what I'm about. Jack, that's a different story. I'll tell you a thing or two about the good old days. We used to have wires on our headphones. Yes, we did. Fully wireless earbuds. Yes, the promise, it's been out there. Apple, even Apple, they're making their own AirPods. A lot of people were curious about them getting involved in the fully wireless earbud business because to this point, it's been a bit of a disaster. Right now you're like, what is what is this fully wireless? Like Bluetooth? I heard about Bluetooth, Lou. No, this means that each little earbud is independent. It's on its own. This company came along, they're called Sky Buds. This is their crack at the fully wireless earbud. Truly wireless earbuds. Now what they've done, as you can see on the back, is they've included this cool charging case which will provide 24 hours of total playtime. So the case itself is also a battery. It's also got water resistance. You don't, you're, you're lifting weights, you're sweating. Three sets of silicon fit tips. So far so good. I like the packaging. There's some, oh, it's solid. First time setup. This is where things get a little sketchy sometimes. We recommend wearing the largest fit tips possible for the best fit and the highest audio quality. Now, here's a little tip for you guys. A tip about tips. Badoom. Whether it's these earbuds or other ones, if they do have interchangeable tips, you always want to have the tightest fit possible. In fact, the characteristics of the sound will change based on that seal within your ear canal. Also, both your ear canals might not be the same size. So every time you get yourself some interchangeable tip earbuds, try out all the different ear tips. And if necessary, have a smaller one in what, like for example, my left ear canal, that's a little tighter than the right one. I became comfortable with it over the years. Jack, on the other hand, I mean, this, this man's gotta, gotta get custom order or something for those guys over there. Press and hold the button on each Skybud for three seconds. And then there's gonna be audio instructions to get it set up. You can see this becomes a play pause button. So first things first, right in the middle here, this is the little charge case. And that's a kind of cool implement. Oh! Check that out, Jack, that's special. Oh, boom. To charge up this case, there's a micro USB on the bottom. These are the different ear tips. We have large, we have small, and I'm assuming that the medium is pre-installed. The actual Sky Buds themselves. Now they are labeled, I like that. You can see which one is right. There's the contact points for the charger. Squeak in there and clip, and then that's it. This case is not just extra battery life, it also acts as your charger, so you've always got it with you. And when you wanna use them, Lift that up, pull them out, and get to work. The medium is pretty good for me. Press and hold the button on each sky button for three seconds. Okay, here we go. Ooh! Oh! It's like you're at the movie theater. It's like, it was like, boom. She's talking to me. It's like, you're, they're in, you know, you gotta put them in pairing mode, open your Bluetooth settings, and so on. Rather than just strictly being, uh, you know, text-based audio, it works a little bit better. So I'm gonna try this three times, okay? 
one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, online. Let's go ahead and give it a little test off. Boot up my SoundCloud here real quick. Okay, so listen, I've been used to trying headphones everywhere from like $5 up to 500. Maybe even more than that, 1500. No matter what you do with Bluetooth, it's never really gonna be on the level of a wired connection. But that's not really what these things are about. A huge component here is the convenience of being complete. Like, look at me, look at me. I can, these are up. I'm over here. I'm over here. You're on the bike, you got the dog, you're walking the dog. You better scoop the poop. Who's gonna hate on you for that? Who's gonna but who's gonna be bothered? You of course know there are phones out there that don't even have headphone jacks anymore. So everybody's going wireless to some extent. This is as wireless as you could get. Even the ones with the little wire, you kind of still know they're there. You're probably listening to a compressed audio file to begin with on a subpar amplifier for those headphones. Convenience, that's the play here. Could be a podcast, maybe you travel, maybe you're on an airplane like me. What I will say, compared to completely wireless earbuds, the voice guiding you through the setup. Okay, tap it three times, okay, pair it up. And so, that's nice. That, that actually worked quite well. And it makes sense, it's an earbud. It should be audio for the manual. Near, 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 near. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These things are tiny. Look at those little guys. If you've been looking at the ear pods, the Apple ear pods, and, and those things got you motivated, and you were like, that's the future I'm looking for. Well, this is probably just a step in that direction with a slightly more substantial sound because of the in ear design. The AirPod is not gonna do that, right? It fits just like a regular ear pod. It's kinda, you can't get a lot of low end frequency unless you get deep in that canal. Come on, kids. Get deep in that canal! So you guys know I'm always on the hunt for gadgets, especially gadgets that can solve problems. You recently heard about these Apple wireless ear pods. They're calling them AirPods, these things that are completely wireless earphones. And I've also been making videos about these fully wireless earphones for a while. And truthfully, the vast majority have sucked. I'm talking about things that go on each ear independently and have no cable connecting the two of them. So when Apple announced these AirPods, I immediately had some apprehension regarding the design. Regular EarPods don't really fit in your ear that tightly to begin with. It got me to thinking and searching and wondering what had been going on. Then I stumbled on these guys right here from Amazon, just over 40 bucks, but they have good reviews. And I was like, wow, could these be a good inexpensive alternative to not just those AirPods, but other contenders in the fully wireless earphone space. Axgeo Dash Wireless. I'll link them down in the description so you don't need to remember that weird product name. Travel case with the earphones inside of there, cable to charge them up, and then some interchangeable ear tips so you can get the right size. Also a tiny little user manual. I'm gonna leave that out for a moment because man, in the past, I have had some nightmare pairing experiences. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about these that's much different than the AirPods is they have an ear hook on there. So these guys are going nowhere. So for fitness, these ones are going to be a lot more reliable, I would assume. So there's a charge port on each one. The cable is a single USB on one end, but then two micros on the other. So it's a single cable mini user manual. Am I in for a nightmare or not? Volume up and down. The middle button is called a multi-function button. There's also a microphone, which I almost missed. So you can speak through this in the event that you do get a phone call. Choose one of the two headphones randomly as a main headphone. Press MFB for two to three seconds. Okay, that's this middle button here. There we go. So when this guy flashes blue and red, then it's in pairing mode. So you want to pair one up and then move to the other. Axe Geo Dash. Okay, cool. Paired. Can I heard it say connected. Okay, now, second headphone, there's no need to go into pairing mode. It just has to be powered on. And then when you want to power them off, all you need to do is power off one and the other one will automatically power off as well. If this works, that is light years better than the last time. The ear hook goes over the top. Same thing on this side. And that's not, that's not going anywhere. With the ear hook on there, Attempt to play some music here. These are way louder. My biggest complaint on that last pair was volume. The volume here is way better. How about that? Fully wireless, you could share. Give one to your friend. 
Give me a second, Jack. I just need to hear a few more. Give me a second. Are you trying to tell me I'm too loud? I'm gonna check the range. These things are sick. These are sick. Like in a good way, I mean. They fit on securely. They sound good for what, what you're paying. Lots of low end, lots of volume. What can I say? I'm gonna tell you something. I think these are gonna be out of stock real quick because this is the promise right here. The fully wireless earbud, the fully wireless future. We're a step closer. So this one I am excited for. I've been waiting on this for a while. It's called the Glyph. This is the Founders Edition, and it's such a hard thing to explain to you if you haven't heard of it. It looks like headphones, right? Well, it is. It sits on top of your head like headphones, so you can be inconspicuous when you're out and about. But, at any point in time, you can flip it down, the headphones stay on, and now you have screens, HD screens in, in front of each eyeball. And you can enjoy something that you will perceive to be as a 50 or 60 inch television in front of your eyes without it being there. You know what I'm saying? You'll see it works with smartphones, computers, tablets, game consoles, and even drones. Definitely gonna try that out in an upcoming video. Retinal imaging, technology, optic, nerve, and battery life of up to four hours. It charges via micro USB. This is not a VR headset. What you are seeing is just a nice, big, personal image. Let's crack this open. It's not cheap. Okay, some cables. Oh, sweet. Okay. This looks like a micro HDMI to HDMI. A micro USB cable to keep it charged up. Oh my goodness, is that ever soft. It's like a, oh, a luxurious carrying case over here. Some kind of strap. Here are a number of nose pieces. Ooh, feels surprisingly premium. Giant padded ear cups here. Oh, it's a magnetic protector for your lenses there. And then those are the lenses themselves. This side that takes the micro or mini, a power switch over here, a power light. So this is where your nose piece goes. I'm not gonna install that just yet. It's a little high up on the head. So somebody who's really looking at you, examining you, they might figure you out. But here's where things get spicy though. If you spin that baby down, all of a sudden look at you now. Hmm. Oh yeah. That's way more comfortable. Oh, that's cool. It's a magnetic fit in there. You know, it's kind of like wearing glasses. I'd say it's a little bit more, a little softer. I want to see what this thing is all about. I, I mean, I want to try to play some games right now, see if I'm capable. So I've got the Xbox booted up now. There's actual adjustments right on the lenses. So you don't have to wear glasses. Ooh, the audio is rumbling right now. Ooh. Oh, not good. It's a little different to get the hang of. There we go. If you've never played Trials before, it is one of the most frustrating games. <laughs> but I love it! I love the frustration of it. Eventually, you will snap and you'll take it out on your loved ones. Maybe one day we're, get, we're ending up in that futuristic zone of, uh, you know, Matrix all the time. just tapped in and logged in. Maybe that's maybe that's where we're going, but I'm not 100% sure that we're there yet. You know how you like lay in bed with like a Netflix series or something like that? Well, if you have your laptop and then you're cranked, the neck is cranked, even with the phone, you got the phone up here, you drop the phone, broken face, you could just uh, go future mode, all right? Be on the cutting edge for the enthusiasts who give zero Fs. You know, their mom comes home and they're like, leave me alone, mom. I'm in the game world. I like it better in here. But yes, I'll still have that grilled cheese and chocolate milk. Thanks, mom. iPhone 7. 
You heard about it. You've seen videos here, in fact, on Unbox Therapy regarding it. Now, the biggest and most controversial development in the world of iPhone 7 talk is this idea of Apple eliminating the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That's the little audio jack on the bottom of your iPhone that allows you to interact with regular headphones, what you would consider to be standard. Granted, a lot of people started using wireless headphones for convenience, but this next iPhone, the iPhone 7, apparently that jack is no longer gonna exist. Kind of like this jack over here. That was pretty good the way I put the jack. Then what are we gonna have instead? Is it gonna be wireless headphones? Headphones that are in the box to use the lightning port or no headphones at all? Speculation is rampant. These are headphones that showed up straight from China. Let me show you. Inside, instead of terminating into a mini jack 3.5 millimeter connector, we have this a lightning connector right on the end of what looks like standardized ear pods. Now, these have shown up on various leaks and rumor sites. Let's take a look. Let's find out if I can just plug these into a standard iPhone and even get an audio signal on the current software without any kind of third party app. I have to admit though, they have nailed the kind of ear pod design. What happens here if I, I'm into the lightning port right now. No third party app. Oh, by default, works by default, works right away. I'm assuming, I just stumbled into a banger. When you're plugging your phone into a dock or a third party accessory that uses the lightning port to output audio, I assume that we're using that same pin situation in order to get that audio output to this cable here. Now the question is, do we have an improvement in sound quality? I think the next obvious thing to do is to play back some tracks over the lightning ear pods and then compare that to a standard set of 3.5 millimeter ear pods, which I need to go get right now. Standard, authentic set of current generation ear pods. It is time for our test. Okay, standard. Ear pods. Wait a second. Wait a second. Something seems off here. <laughs> the standard ear pods sound way better. Way better. Here's what I think I don't think these are legit at all. And if I had to speculate right now, I would suggest that Apple is not going to include a set of lightning ear pods in the next iPhone. The headphone jack will be dead. I think it's gonna be up to you to pick up either a third party or maybe an accessory that's official that, that Apple makes or a couple of headphone options. A marketing ploy, a marketing strategy, if you will, to cause consumers to look at the headphone section of the Apple store or the website and think about immediately grabbing an upgrade and spending more per transaction. If you're on the street, if you're on a subway, on a train, on an airplane, you see these things everywhere. Now, if you owned Beats as well as Apple, you'd be saying, how can we sell a pair of headphones with every iPhone? Here's how, take this out of the box, change the port so that the old ones don't work, and force people to look at lightning options or wireless options, which of course in the store are going to be dominated by Beats products. I think there will be an adapter in the box. There will probably be a lightning to mini jack adapter so you could use old headphones if you wanted to. The real move here is to go with something wireless. There's a lot of great ones out there. In fact, I've done many videos, so go watch those. Just cause there's no headphones in the box doesn't mean you need to grab those Beats. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and before we get into it, I want to mention an opportunity for two people to come with me to Iceland for an incredible tech experience you have no idea what you're in for. Click the link in the description, all the details are on my Facebook page. Join me on the ride of a lifetime. So sometimes things show up here and the packaging is not magnificent. This was in like a plastic bag. 
but that did not affect my excitement. Now I'm gonna tell you what this, this thing is in a moment here, but first I wanna do a little demonstration. Over here, I got some Grado headphones. Great headphones, no problem here. Put them on, you're listening to music, loving life, then it's getting late or you're on an airplane. You start to doze a little bit, you know what I mean? Inevitably, lean up against something, you're trying to, you got a pillow, you're not comfortable getting stabbed right now. Nothing against these headphones, that's not what they're for. So I'm browsing around Amazon and I'm like, what's the solution for this? Is it earbuds? Well, here's the problem with earbuds. Even uh, the slimmest of earbuds, you put them in and you lay down and now you're stabbing yourself in the ear canal. There's nothing worse than a sore ear canal. So, I found these, they're called sleep phones. And the idea here is it's like a headband with very slim speaker units in it that are designed to help you listen to whatever you like while you're sleeping or while you're on an airplane or while you're leaning up against something trying to get comfortable. In fact, the way they say it is pajamas for your ears. Well, let's give it a shot. <clears throat> So, oh, that's like, there's like a control area, probably some electronics there, and then the the speaker units appear to be one here and one here. I'm guessing we do it like this. What do you guys think about that look? <laughs> You're on the airplane, who cares what, what you look like? Relax, getting a little warm right now. Similar to the video where I had the giant pillow on my head. I don't know whose idea that was. I didn't take this part off, a little twister. There we go. This is the moment of truth. And like I said, expectations super low here. Listen to me. They're not very loud. They're not going to compete with your earphones, headphones, earbuds. Something I like about them. Of just being able to don't move around, you know? You're not having to re make any adjustments as you move around. You know what? I just I just realized something. What if you go, is this a double? Look at that. Now I'm in the double zone. Check me out. I don't know how much they are. They're not that expensive, I remember. I'll put a link in the description. Sleep phones! Catch a nap or two. You look terrible. This is another example of something I love more now than when I got it. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today I've got something that I've wanted to try out for a long time but haven't had the chance to. This is bone conduction audio from a company called Aftershocks. These are the Blues 2S. Lou, what is bone conduction audio? Essentially these things sit in front of your ears. What? No, not in them, in front of them. And you got some fancy anatomical action going on inside of your skull, right here, that somehow allows audio to be transferred via your bones. Never thought I would want that. The future. Premium pitch, stereo sound, sweat resistant, six hours of battery life, they are wireless. That's what they look like there. The benefit here is that you don't have something obstructing your actual ears. These guys, a little bit of a first here. Look at that Ferrari red right there. They also have a, a noise canceling microphone there. Will it even work with glasses? Let's see here. Look at that. Jack, you see that there? So it's a one size fits all type deal. That's your power switch, as well as your USB port for charging these up. Volume controls are there as well. I guess all the bone conduction magic happens on this section right here. Interesting. Micro USB to charge it up. Uh, weird rubbery thing. I'm guessing this is to give you a stickier fit. Stickier, maybe tighter. I guess it's somewhat adjustable. Little traveling pouch. Honestly, the most surprising thing about these to me was the reviews on Amazon. People people like them. Apparently, these are the way to go. So, of course, this is the moment of truth. This is why you tune in to your favorite show here on YouTube. Oh, wow. Letting me know that they're now in pairing mode. 
Ooh, this is exciting, guys. Blues 2S. Let's go ahead here. Hmm. There's something interesting about not having headphones in your ears, but instead in front of them. Look at me, I'm moving, I'm boxing. What am I, what else am I, I'm playing basketball maybe? And I can hear the real world. Ooh. Oh, there's like a vibration to it. Whoa. That is an odd sensation. It's like somebody's tickling me. Not that I don't like that. Jack, stay away from me. Okay, so it's not obstructing my hearing. I can hear what's around me. Are we getting a lot of bleed out of them? No, but it's clear. I mean, it sounds like they're in, my, it's very odd. It sounds like they're in my ears, but they're not, you know? I'm also interested in these, not just for music, but for listening to podcasts. This is so weird. For a podcast, it sounds great, but I can still talk to you. It's very bizarre. Oof. Listen, they're not blasting my head away like a pair of real, but there's a different kind of thump to it because of the vibration. I don't think I'd use them to like replace my actual headphones, but there's something about them I like. Would it be weird to say that it tickles in a pleasant way? I can hear my surroundings, but it's like there's a soundtrack going on along with it and it's tapped into my brain. It's like the sound is, it's already there. It's in my brain. What if you're like some kind of mastermind surgeon? You like to have classical music on? Mozart or something? This is way more fleshed out than I had imagined. Not a gimmick. Very cool. And as I said earlier, tickles in a pleasant way. Oh! In case you guys are wondering, there's been construction downstairs. Every so often there are noises that come along with construction. They interrupt the process here. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today it is another installment of the Does It Suck show here on Unbox Therapy. If you have no idea what that is, go watch the other episodes. I don't know why I'm pointing that way. Today we are looking at some wireless earphones which are actually completely wireless. Now you're probably thinking, but Lou, you've shown us wireless earphones and headphones before. What do you mean completely? Well, these fit into your ear canals, these guys here, and have no wire, not a wire going to the back. Can you hear that? See, that's the noise I'm talking about. These are actually two little units independent of one another that go into your ears. Let's actually open a box. So these are called the D900 from a company called Syllable. And this tiny little box here houses the goods. Extra ear tips. This is a micro USB charging cable. A little bit of paperwork. Quality control. Passed fairly recently. Ooh, hot product. Tiny little things here. Oh, cool, so the case itself is how you're gonna charge them up. Here's your little cable right here. Plugs right in. That's cool, I like that they charge in the case. Here they are, right here. Look at those little guys. Now, you can get somewhere between six and 10 hours of music listening out of these guys. Charge them at night, pick them up the next day. 10 hours is pretty good for most people, so. Now that is all Never know when that saw is gonna go off. So portability, convenience, Bluetooth headset functionality, that's all cool, but these are headphones after all. So sound is the most important aspect. So I'm gonna go ahead, try these on and get to the bottom of it. But before that, they need to be paired up. Now I've been told that the Bluetooth pairing function might work a little differently because they are two independent devices. Well, let's find out. I see a flashing light. Flashing lights are good when it comes to Bluetooth. D900. Yes. Connected. Call audio and media audio. The moment of truth. Okay. We're installed. No SoundCloud. I will not be inviting friends today. All right, you're invited. Right now I hear nothing. 
this could be a problem, especially here on, oh, it lost its media, okay, media audio, here we go. It was only paired for call audio, but I thought that, oh, I have audio now. My, this one is cutting in and out. It's weird, whenever I touch this one, it cuts out. You know what I mean, if I do this, cuts out. I feel like it's maybe weak Bluetooth. How loud am I talking right now, by the way? You gonna hold down what, both buttons? Yeah. Okay. They cut out. Give me one. Wait, like is it? There, it doesn't, oh wait, it still cuts out. This is a fiasco. Debacle, if you will. Two D900s. There you go. Now what? Click one. One, two, three, four. I gotta be paired to both though. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. No. Yep. Okay, I'll, you want me to try this one? Yeah. Two, three, four, till it's off. They go off. You know, if they weren't talking to each other or to the phone, AJ, then how was I getting sound out of both? It makes no sense. Still cuts out if I cover it. They might suck. Can I say something else really quickly? The sound is not great. I mean, they work, but I mean, the sound is not great. I have nothing in this one now. Nightmare. <laughs> one was cutting in and out. The sound quality is janky. They're not loud enough, that's for sure. You imagine every time, like, oh shit, that thing came off again. Okay, hold it for four seconds, tap it four times. Just reading this on its own should be enough to tell you that this is not fully fleshed out right now. Plus compressor and air gun, nail gun downstairs happening right now. Listen to it. The whole point of this show is to uncover stuff like this. I can't recommend this to you, and therefore, I'm gonna have to say that these suck. It's a cool idea. We ain't there yet. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next episode. I tried. I need some volume. I'm out. Later, guys. What's up, guys? Lou here, back with another video, and today, I am bringing you what Mel B claims are tangle-free earbuds. Excuse me? Everybody's been using earbuds for many, many years and tangling has just become part of the business. So let's just say you're still looking for an inexpensive pair of headphones. Skip out on the whole tangling part of things. Mel B, she used to be a Spice Girl. I guess she's still a Spice Are you always a Spice Girl? Once a Spice Girl, always a She's a Spice Girl. Scary Spice. She's got this company, she's got these earbuds. My question is to you, Mrs. Mel B, are your headphones any good? Or do they suck? Um, it's probably somewhere in between. It's a weird kind of design. There's like this sleeve that goes across the headphones. She's happy about it. Now these ones apparently have adjustable base as well. Oh my goodness. If you've got like, I don't know, ear pods lying around that you keep in a purse. Purse. How many females are watching? If you're a female watching this, I appreciate you because you are part of 5% of the overall viewership. 5% of a big number is a big number, but I'm just giving a shout out to the ladies right now. Why not? Purse, bag, whatever you call it. Headphones get tangled in there. Nightmare. Rat's nest. Hate it. Anyhow. There's some extra ear tips in here as well. And here are the actual headphones. Firmly pinch the tube at this point. Pinching tubes. Oh, here we go. Crunch correctly. Why are they so concerned? What happens if you don't crunch correctly? I'm pinching at this point, and I'm pinching at this point. Okay, then these go left, right, up in here, and down to there. Okay, that makes sense. Now, how do you put them away? Firmly pinch, then pinch the tube here, and stretch it. Oh my god, is this gonna be magic? Okay, here we go. Oh! Success! You'd get more used to this over time, but boom. Max earbudness. Then you're done. Grab here. No more tangles. Good crunch, bad crunch. Is pushing it too far this way. Okay, I didn't do that. No bad crunch here. No bend, don't bend on the crunch. Straight crunch. <laughs> no slingshot, Jack. You see that there? <laughs> but the idea of just a simple pair of earbuds in your bag that never become tangled. All right, so ear pods. 
So here's what happens, okay? Like rat's nest. These are not even that bad right now. So let's say I want to use these right now. Aha! You get the point. Uh, it happens. Everybody's experienced it before, right? Like, cool. We get the point. Thanks, Mel B. What do they sound like? They're headphones, after all. It's kind of important. There's an N and a B and a little arrow. Now when I spin it, I go to B, I go to bass mode. They're describing N as soft, pure, and R as strong, dynamic. Oh yeah. Way more bass, obviously, that's the idea. So I, I guess that's kind of cool. You can tune your sound a little bit. I don't know how much better they sound than ear pods, to be honest. I think, I feel like I need to do this right now because, and I'm tangled. To finally, do a quick comparison here. Got to go back one more time. These fit deeper in your ear canal, obviously, with these types of tips here. Now, these don't sound like some of the insano million dollar headphones that I test here, obviously. If you're considering these because tangling headphones has been... Has your life been altered by the tragedy that is tangled headphones? Yeah, and they're a little better than this. People are they're, they're sit, you're sitting around like, what's up with your headphones, man? They look a little, uh, I don't know, it looks a little weird. And you're like, what? Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was just asking about those headphones of yours. Uh, sorry, what was that? Just turning my bass knob, buddy. Wireless headphones, everybody's talking about them. But what is this mumbo jumbo about? Fully wireless headphones, or as this company's calling it, entirely wireless headset. No wire between each one of the earbuds. Now, this is not the first time I have tackled a product claiming to do this thing, to be fully wireless. And to this point, it's been an absolute disaster. Pair the earbud to that earbud, pair it back to you, get yourself a pair to eat, forced me to reevaluate my entire life, in fact. So that's the kind of pressure I'm gonna apply to this new company that says they got it right. What are they called, Cask? Full wireless, full freedom, 13 hours, anti-fall, rainproof. Look at these people on the front. I'm here to let you know if something is good or if something sucks. Let's jump inside the box and find out. Look at this guy. Look at those little guys, tiny little things. These things, oh, change the style. It's all about your tech lifestyle. Some kind of, some kind of, some kind of cool looking charge case. Extra ear tips, depending on the size of your ear canal. Very important to get a good seal. How does this little chart, oh. It's a little home for your guys here, you know? One goes there, right? Yeah, and they're charging, and then this comes out, and that goes to, obviously, a USB connection. So, it's easy to travel with, right? All right, guys, it's time for the moment of truth, because the pairing fiasco begins. Press and hold the play button on both earphones for six seconds to turn them on. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. There's a little tiny, it's a faint light, but you can see it there. Flashing blue and red. Let me see if I can pick it up on my phone. Yes, got it. Okay. Access to Bluetooth. Is that it? Is there no weird pairing between each one? If that's true, we might be onto something here, folks. If we are in business right now, this could be our entrance into the fully wireless promised land. They're not loud. I think they're maxed out. The phone is maxed out, and these guys... I mean, I have the plus button. Could it be that track, maybe? Let me try something else. I mean, it's about freedom. There's no wires. I'm lifting weights. I'm shadow boxing. I'm on the electric skateboard. It's about freedom. Who doesn't like freedom? Pros, 
Of course, these things are super easy to set up. I held the button, they paired right away. Sound quality, eh. I'm not jumping out of my socks, so to speak. I don't know what it is, I feel like I want a little bit more volume at least. It's about uh, convenience as much as it's about sound quality. If you're looking for sound quality, I think for now, go with something wired. If you need the ultimate freedom, if you're trying to do the body pump, if you're trying to bench press 3,000 pounds, this might be the way to go.